Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household of Ali, Amanda, and Derek. And boy, do we have a great episode for y'all. The ladies from Girls Gotta Eat are with us, Raina and Ashley. What a delightful pair they are. And uh, we just have a fun, just fun conversation with them about all things dating, love, relationships. We get a little scandal of it all. What a delightful couple. Are they like they're like a, they're basically a couple. What a delightful couple! Yeah, they are yeah. a duo. A duo. I think that I wonder if they're listening. Are they? Do they, they, they like to be stri- described as a couple or a duo? Do you think? Probably a duo. Life partners, also. I oh, think they're true. like. They couple. did say they yeah. were life partners. See? That's true. I don't know. Duo. Whatever. Anyway, uh, a couple of housekeeping notes. I think we're just going to keep this intro a little brief because the ladies are so fun. Just so you know, we have uh, the Bachelorette recap just dropped uh, the premiere. Charity season premiered this past Monday. I got to be honest, if you guys decided not to watch this season and you thought it was going to be a little boring, I've only seen the first two episodes, but so far, so great. Uh, as I've mentioned already, Charity is a little more uh, sloppy and toxic than I had anticipated. And I mean that with the greatest amount of respect and love for charity. It, Every I, time you I describe like you her, say... the words get more and more cutting. <laughs> yeah. You started out with, messy. I, she might not have a good picker. And then it became she has a terrible messy. Picker. And then and toxic, toxic was thrown in. We, we all have a, we have sloppy. We all have a, she's not sloppy. Yeah, maybe a little bit with her picker. Yeah. Anyways, listen, <laughs> the point is she's great television. So far, it's been great television. You know, I think it's some, relatable oh, is the word you're looking for. <laughs> oh, whatever. You know what, Charity, if you're listening, no hard feelings. I, I'm sure people will go, do you know, you know what Nick said to you? And blah, blah, blah. Like, listen, we're here to watch television. We're here to make bad decisions. We're here to watch Charity's journey. And I don't want to watch someone who makes pragmatic and thoughtful and healthy decisions from night one all the way to night nine. It's great in life. It's bad for television. And it turns out that Charity so far is great television. And I just want to say thank you. To charity. There's no better great TV uh, in, in Bachelor World than someone who is attracted to someone that we fucking hate. And so far, she seems to really like someone we fucking hate. And it only seems to get better. And I, I and if you aren't watching, you should check it out. Give it a shot. I'm just saying. Maybe go back and listen to our recap with uh, the one and only Arden Marine. Very hysterical episode, even if you're not watching. And, find your, and think to yourself, does this tickle my fancy? Mm. I think it might. I think it might. Anyways, Charity, we love you. Thanks for being a little sloppy. This is episode 603. We, uh, If you haven't listened to episode 600 with Justin Long, he's back. That was great. That was always great talking with it's Justin. It's like coming home. It is like coming home. Anything we really need to get into before we get to the ladies? Just make sure to tune in to Better Date Than Never tonight. It's 9 p.m. Eastern, there 6 p.m. Pacific there on you. the AMP app. There you go. Uh, also, don't forget, oh, we have an update special this Friday on Classic. It's for everyone to listen to. You do not have to be a Vile Files Plus subscriber to listen to this week's update special but if you love these updates and you're starving for more well we have great news we drop two more every month behind vile files plus and it's a seven day free trial so you can sign up you can check out those updates uh and you can quit if you want but also there's a great additional content in addition to all the great updates that we have so check that out now and uh anything else i'm missing i don't think so let's get to uh the ladies from girls gotta eat reyna and ashley welcome ladies thank oh. you reyna and ashley welcome so glad to be We're here excited. how's your heart how's her heart we start every question <laughs> yeah oh. sorry it's very la uh, out of the gates. <laughs> how's your heart chakra? it's very, it's very... <laughs> are, you are you happy you're sad are you your... okay <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I'm, we both have tattoos of hearts on our left arm. We have something in common. Oh, do my, you, does your have barbed wire? Oh my god! No, it's less murdery. Is that barbed wire? <laughs> Did you say oh my god? Like, ugh. well, no. Okay, yeah. If if you're gonna get a barbed wire tattoo, that one's more acceptable than like an old school like, like Pam Anderson. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you know, it's fine. My heart is really good. It was my birthday this week, and happy birthday! Thank you so much. And I had a birthday party in New York and L.A., and I feel just like full of love and gratitude. Did you throw both those parties 
Yeah, for I did. yourself. I did. Yeah. Every year I throw my own birthday parties because I did know that what also I've, sounds so judgmental. So Ashley plans all of our vacations because she's like, I know what I want to do better than everybody. I entertain better than anybody. So I want to plan yes. a party. Amazing. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank Was you it, so much. How would you rate this birthday? I'm really 10 out of 10. Am I allowed to ask? What yeah, no, I'm yeah. Real. One, I just you had like two East Coast, you had West Coast and East Coast. Which was better? I like the Ooh. West Coast better. Oh, wow. you're gonna say it? I said it because of the friends. Because I hosted it at my house. I really love the spread. It felt really nice to have everybody like in my home. I've never had a house before in my whole life. I've lived in a one bedroom apartment my whole life. Well, since I left Pittsburgh, you know, my parents' house. You're from Pittsburgh? Yeah, yes. I am. Steel Town. Yeah, Steel Town. Um, it was just they're both really great. I just, I really enjoyed yesterday. It's because it's just like a Sunday fun day. Everybody came, like, relaxed and had to have food at the house. It was really fun. Bi coastal birthday. Yeah. I've heard of like bi coastal living, but there's so many people who want to celebrate me. We have Flex. so many friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was really fun. Which birthday did you like better? I did like the West Coast birthday better. Nice. Well, I don't we know. So, so, okay. Okay. So, Raina, she did her birthday in New York on a boat. And this is the third year in a row that she's done this b- boat birthday. They're amazing, but I kind of feel like we're still chasing the 2021 high. <laughs> yeah. And mm. we did it in 2021 and it was like right like June 2021. Everybody had just gotten like vaccinated. And it was like the, even that night we went out, it was the first night bars were at full capacity in New York. Right. Like you felt so alive the energy, then yeah, from COVID yeah. and everybody came and the boat was perfect. And Raina pulled her tits out. It was like this whole thing. And I just feel like ever. <laughs> since, well, she pulled one out. I pulled out both this year. This so like year. I upgrade. She could only get one out two years ago. But I think ever is like since. like a birthday special for you? Yeah, it is has been now. Yes, we've elevated the boat each year. And this year, best boat, both boobs. Okay. But I just feel, don't off, you man. kind of feel like you have this epic thing yeah, and this moment in time it. and you keep trying to recreate it. And I'm not saying that the last two years have been bad by any stretch. They've been amazing, but they just, I feel like we almost need to pivot. I'm saying we. I'm ready. But we are a partnership. <laughs> I use we so much with her. It's crazy. Yeah. That I have to, she's not even part of some of the stuff I do. I talk about. I'm That's just like, good. <laughs> it's like a healthy relationship. You're using those we and us like words, you know? It's not a romantic relationship. Well, it's but a yeah. relationship. She's my life partner. Yeah. yeah. Relationship, uh, relationships are relationships. Yeah. Some of our most important ones are just, you know, just without the sex. We, we talked agree. about that. I mean, Ashley, just nobody's ever going to know me the way she does ever, forever. Like, Not, I just feel like you know so much more about me than I know about me. Yeah. <laughs> but then I she just, can be honest with you and you can't be honest with yourself. Ashley is a, a tough call. love person in a way that like has really helped me over the years. Definitely. What's your two's origin story? What's up, babe? <laughs> <laughs> so we we um met in 2017 on an influencer trip. It's just like oh, the worst yeah. story <laughs> um, in Aruba. What's that the uh, dating equivalent of? Raya. Raya. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We met on Raya. Uh, or no, we met like, you know what it would be? It would be like we met in, in Mykonos, you know, something like that. Yeah, like, like our friend in the sorority summer. did a mixer or yes. something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we met on this trip and I had moved to New York like earlier that year in 2017. So we met on this trip and just really hit it off. Um, and I thought she was so funny. We were both single. And after the trip, came back to New York and, you know, we're like, are we going to be real friends? And we kind of started hanging out a little bit. And I had wanted to do a podcast for quite some time before that, but I didn't know who I wanted to do it with. I wasn't really into the solo thing. I had this guy we were going to do it and that kind of fell through. So um, after a few months of really just being casual friends, like we really were not some sort of best friendship going into this business and life we have since created. But I was just like, would you be interested in doing a podcast? And she said yes immediately. And my main question for her was, are you going to be you want to be open about your life, your sex life, all these things like I've never had a problem with that. I've been doing stand up comedy for 10 years. I used to blog. My whole life has been on the Internet or, you know, on a stage forever. And she was like, yeah, totally. And you just kind of never know for sure. You know, you're like, are you going to clam up and be like, my dad can hear this? You know, and she was just super open and funny. And we just had chemistry from the start. So that was like the origin story of our friendship and the podcast. But it's interesting. And I think. I mean, at least it's worked for us. I don't know that it's the best way, but that we started it almost as brand new friends. And you, the, our listeners have actually heard our kind of friendship evolve over time. Like We don't know all each other's stories. Now we do. But and then that almost made the business kind of come first. Now our relationship comes first, you know, but I think it's a little different than like starting a business with your best friend from forever. You Did know, you guys ever like get close to any breakups or. 
No, no we no have fight. like pretty healthy communication. I mean, Ashley has been like really integral, and I'm I'm a person that just like I'll marinate and being mad at somebody for so long. And I'm like I'm just not gonna say a thing. I'm just, and Ashley has been like let's address this right now. And we've had some like blowout fights, but like at the end of them, like we're better for it. Our friendship's better for it. Like we might be saying we never say a thing that like we can't take back to each other either. Yeah. Like I don't think that we've like. I don't there's no low blows, but like we talk about stuff that like I've always been afraid to like address the friend and I'm always better for it at the end of it. I'm always happier. And like it's not really about ego. It's just like you hurt my feelings doing this and that or whatever. But like it's well, we'll go to therapy if something terrible ever happens. Have you guys been to couples therapy? We never have. We're just, like we just we would if we had to. But I mean, truly, there's never been a moment where I was like, this could this might be over. It's never once crossed my mind. And yeah. I think we've always had one of the same goals with the business and we do communicate really well. And then, yeah, every once in a while we have to like really hash it out and, you know, could be a little yelling, screaming here and there. And then we're like stronger for another, like at least half a year, you know? I wonder if friends have ever gone to like couples therapy. The, well, business partners do. Like, I don't know about actual, just like two girlfriends, but we've talked to other podcast hosts even who have gone. Really? Yeah. Interesting. A few people I can think of who yeah. like, cause it's like, Should there's a business on the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to name them I right don't, now. Top five. I don't know business wrong, partners that are as close as us. Like we're in business together. We are families. Like we travel with each other. Like I go home with her for Christmas. Like we're just truly really good friends. We have a lot of similar friends. Also same, same friend groups. We travel with them. It's not easy to be with somebody this much. And like, it just works for us. Well, you guys are doing amazing things when it comes to the podcast world. So congratulations on, on that. I was actually in, Natalie, my fiance and I, we went to Miami. Mm -hmm. And because we know so, Miami so well, we stayed at the Fountain Blue. Oh. She left. That's very, <laughs> that's very new Miami. <laughs> new to Miami. And if I remember correctly, maybe I'm thinking, but you guys. We had a show there. Yeah. And I was. Were you I there saw, when, you, when we like had I posters saw your up poster. and stuff? Yeah. Oh my God. And I was like, pop off. Queen. I wish we would have been there at the same time. That was yeah. a, a lot of boobs came out of that wild show. show. That was actually where people started showing their tits. Wait, so, this is like a, the audience thing. Yeah. Is. Our live shows are crazy. Wow. Recent, yes. Yeah, since I mean, Miami, I've seen photos. You lots guys, of tits. You, you have a huge audience. Yeah. <laughs> well, this girl, so I've had two breast reductions. And this girl email was like, I had a breast reduction just like Raina, and I'm going to show my tits at the show. And we we're like, yes. So we start reading the email, and she's not there. And then we're like, we're so sorry, you guys. This girl's going to like show her boobs to everyone. And some girl was like, I'll do it. And then, like, all of a sudden, your titties were coming out all over the place. Like, bralette on? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> every mark is different. <laughs> so every city is different in terms of, like, bra on, full titties out. So, like, we were just in Ohio. And Cleveland and Columbus bra a lot of bras. Bras on. underwire. C Cincinnati, just titties out. And I don't know how, I don't know the correlation. Cincinnati's <laughs> probably the wildest of the three cities. But, like, I'm trying to think. We did, like... Our, all of our big shows in May. We did DC, Boston, Philly, and Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Like huge theater shows, Chicago Theater, you know, the mm -hmm. Wang Theater in Boston and stuff. And yeah, they're all a little different where I'm like, there's a lot of nipples out. And then <laughs> another city will be like, oh, I'm not just seeing bras, boring, boo. You know, but it's really <laughs> funny because we were in, <laughs> we just, it just kind of happens organically. And we're like, if anyone wants to show their tits, like you can just bring them out. And we're <laughs> like, but is there like a reason why? Or is it like we titty just, time? We just you say know? it and then it just happens. And we were in Chicago and my, my brother's there and he's, his wife is with him. And he's like looking at her. He's like, are there tits everywhere? Like he's like, <gasps> Can I like look around? Like it's kind of I saw him and his, he's kind of like trying to look. And then my dad comes to DC and the tits come out and my dad's like, "Where are they?" And he's like looking at me. He has binoculars. His hands are out. No, I'm just kidding. But it was just funny that people don't see it coming and then they're like, "What is happening here?" And then every guy that's been dragged there in the room is like, "This is fucking awesome." Is this like a free of the nipple campaign? Sure, sure. Sure. Well, we started talking sure. about I pulled out one boob at my party years ago and we joke about it and it's just like spiraled into this thing. The live shows are like the most fun, wild, <laughs> just like incredible environment. You just like feel the energy. And so many people plan their bachelorettes around at their birthday trips. And then slowly a lot of guys started coming with like their their wives, yeah. their girlfriends. And so this is just a all nice guys like, I'll go, babe. Everyone. I'll go. Like, and now all the guys yeah. listening are like, I'm definitely going to go. Yeah. But so Raina got, she's had two breast reductions. People want to see her tits. So that's part of it too. And then I pulled mine out in Cincinnati for the first time and like, oh my gosh, a moment for me. Rush. Like, no, I've never, I feel like Taylor Swift at the, at the Ares tour. Like I was like, I was like a standing ovation. I was like, I'm going to do this. I you get got a it. standing ovation. No, it was like, it was loud though. It was like loud and really long. Like it was, it was a strong She's applause. never done it. So people were like very excited. Yeah. I mean, it's like seeing lightning strike.
I was like, she's doing it. And then I didn't know you did it. I was like, I missed it. And then she did it again. It was amazing. I mean, they're nothing to like write home about, but it's good fine. Good titties. They're fine. Yeah. They're good titties. My dad was at the Cleveland show, so less titties. I didn't show mine, so I think people weren't that inspired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you guys have to do like a whose family's in town kind of yeah. inventory. Yeah. Like I wouldn't have shown my tits if my dad was there. I can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah. That might so be anyway. Tough. We've we've spiraled. Anyways, what do you ladies want to talk about? It's just nice to have professionals in the room. You know, I feel like we can talk about whatever you you ladies talk about relations with dating and sex all the time. We do a little bit of that in this show. I huh? figured we'd just talk about the most relatable topics out there and and just get your all thoughts. I don't do know. You do um do you do a lot of sex stuff on the show? I have not heard any. But well, we is do. That okay. <laughs> we would like to talk about like, fucking. That's if that's like, okay. That's like judgment. <laughs> Please, we we talk about that on our live show, but okay. date than never on okay. Thursday night, nine p.m. Eastern for anyone listening. Oh, it's like very after dark themes, such like as an after stuff dark. It gets orgies. a little unhaged. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But we uh we uh, we don't have a we don't go into it like let's talk about. But we talk, I mean, sex we comes do. up all yeah. the time. A we lot do. of our yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, We had yeah. a butt stuff episode. Well, let's try it. <laughs> like, Wait, I feel what, like yeah. Let's try it. Is there something stuff? specifically about sex that you want to get into? Well, we brought you a gift. We own a second company. We have a, a sex toy company. What did you like, bring it? I, 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 I had to drive back home. That's why I was a few minutes late to get you a present. <laughs> Thank you so much, Buffalo. Um, but we launched a line of like premium sex toys and an app. All the toys connect to the app. There's remote control. There's erotic audio. There's great videos. And we have um, flavored blowjob gel also. So um, this is for you, Natalie. We wanted to bring you like a partner toy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What do we um, got here? All right. So this and, is for you. And unpacking. Unboxing. 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 Is so I brought you our GG <laughs> toy, which is. Oh, good choice. Thank Vibes you. I was only. hoping you'd be Gigi. excited. It has a panty clip. Why do we call a uh, panty clip? So like a. So push. it'll go in her panties and then you can control it with the app from wherever. We have some history with this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, what's, we, the hit? what's the story? Dr. Uh, Laura Berman. Uh, was on my podcast. This is years ago. This is before I think your time. No, no, you were, no. We remember this we story. There. You were yep. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Not the first Somatic. time we've heard this story. <laughs> uh, and she gave us like some in. The... Oh, you got it. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Is this the remote control or is this? Yeah. No, that's the toy. That's the remote the controls on your phone, so it connects via Bluetooth. And this will go. And there's like underwear. <laughs> we in here? It's underwear. BYO underwear. No, <laughs> it's BYO. <laughs> Hi, okay, and it fits. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we tried. <laughs> we, we tried that. Uh, we went out to dinner with our housekeeper really? and her brother. <laughs> Nothing gets me going like my housekeeper at dinner with my uh, brother. And her brother. You're the the housekeeper. You were brother? controlling her vibrator while her brother was at dinner. Her housekeeper's brother. Her housekeeper's brother. <laughs> Not her brother. Her house. Our housekeeper, Cindy. We okay. have a Cindy. Okay. Okay. Got it. How did it go? Uh, we haven't used it since. Okay. All right. Round two. Well, maybe it was the product itself. Yeah. Well, Didn't and there's you some blowjob in there, right? Hit the remote. Mm-hmm. So, which can and can you drive on your own? Could she? Can she drive? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can use it an outside. I use that as just like a regular small, like bullet style vibrator. You don't need to clip into your panties. Okay. It's versatile. Which which one is the? Press the button. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's just lighting up. <laughs> lighting up. There we go. You can click through it; it'll turn up the intensity. And then we also brought you a uh, flavored blowjob gel, so you guys can have extra fun. Dude, oh pina colada. I did really pina colada. Yeah, the penis colada. It's the what's flavor. the one that has like the suction thing? That's our most popular one. I've heard good reviews. It's like uh, light. It's like you can't do it every night. You know, it's like game changing. You're like, what? I can't. It's this is gonna set me up for failure in the bedroom, right? You'd have this like thing so that just it's powerful. It's kind of crazy. It's. It's a treat. When did you uh, get comfortable with the sex toys? Is that something you guys have always been into? I actually have really kind of always been into them. I mean, I, I mean, early 20s, I guess. I, I don't think I had like definitely didn't have a sex toy in, in college. But I think a girlfriend and I went to get some together one night, maybe when I was like, yeah, sometime in my early 20s. And then I got really into them and I would host a sex toy party with all my girlfriends like around valentine's day like for many many years my best friend and i would do this in atlanta with pure romance which i think is still around it was one of those kind of like tupperware parties of sex toys back in the day and i just was so in into it and even then it was like more taboo and i just never thought of it like that i just was like sex is something that should be like open on the table i was brought up on like sex in the city you know that was always my mo so it's been like a passion of mine for a long time and then it just seemed like a natural thing for us to create. We wanted to create some other type of business to capitalize on the podcast success and the um, 
audience and their loyalty to us. And the really boxing gets, is wonderful. Yeah, it's, we're we're really we we wanted to make it's everything really, feel really, really nice and premium really and. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So That's your vibe. I like that. Nice little logo. Thank you. Very, I up. I always use sex toys myself, like by myself, but like with a partner, I didn't start until like much, much later. That was my question for you both. Um, And it's just, I think that sex with the same person gets a little monotonous. And I think it's just like a fun little treat. Also, <laughs> I know a lot of women that like can't get off without some type of stimulation yeah. during penetrative sex. So it's a fun, like really normal thing to bring into the bedroom. I think it's just, you put on like a little show. At, like, I think that like the common... Like what, what people used to think is like it's going to emasculate somebody if you bring a toy into the bedroom. And we just think it's just a fun addition to a sexual experience. Yeah, it like enhances a sexual experience. I couldn't agree more, but yeah. I have heard out in, in the wild that at times I, I might be the exception. But have you ladies in your experience when you try to bring it into the bedroom, was it ever met with resistance or is it always? I'm not, I, I mean, I want to be honest. I'm not bringing it into the bedroom every time, you know, and I, I think. But if like, you have, when you do. I'm trying to think if I've ever. No, I mean, I've definitely had guys be like, what, what are we doing here? You know, and you kind of have to like explain it. But we're also in the, in the um, process of developing a cock ring, which I've always been a super fan of. So a guy that I maybe dated so long ago kind of introduced me to that early on. And I felt like that was kind of an early foray into like guys are into this kind of stuff, too. But yeah, I don't I've never had any any real pushback from it. Pushback. I think it's a fun way to put on a show. I think if you're like, every time we just like start kissing, we go into penetrative sex and that experience is over. And I think that people, that's why you get bored with sex with the same person. It's like, we have the same script. We do the same menu every single time. It's like blow job. I get on top. He gets on top. Then we're done. And it's a nice way to just mix it up and to be like, I'm going to put on a show for you. And I think it's maybe less intimidating to somebody because you're like, this is not in place of you. This is for you to watch. This is like a really fun right, thing. Like, it's not, I'm not bringing out a giant dildo to put inside <laughs> of myself. Like it's more of like smaller toys, like stuff for your like clit, like that kind of thing. You know, I, we, I had this toy so many years ago. We were, we have something that we could kind of can compare it to now where it's like vibrating finger pads. Like the guy just wears that, you know? So we have a kind of a really oh, cool yeah. like finger sleeve that vibrates. So it's like, he kind of wears it. It's just extra simulation so for you. So it feels like he's doing something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys, your fingers, they can't vibrate yeah. as hard as you need sometimes. But it's, I, I don't, I feel like there's this misconception that you're bringing out some giant dildo to be like, you can't, <laughs> you know, get as deep as this giant thing. Like, that's not no, what I don't, it is. I don't know. I, I've never, I've, I've always been pro, I guess, sex toy in a sense. I've never, you know, it's just like, you know, Batman needed a Robin, you know, why not? Why not me? You know, but I have heard that some men have met it with some resistance. I can and, see that. And I was just curious out in the wild for the ladies who are, are very pro sex toy. Mm -hmm. But you they know, also who are might confident, just not like, you know, know what, what to do. Like yeah. the hesitation could just be also anxiety about what do I do with this? Like because they're it's new to them as opposed to not. You know what I'm saying? Like they might be like, I don't know what to do with that. Right. You really have to teach somebody. Yes. I have a girlfriend who like can't get off from penetrative sex. She's like, it's been a problem in my relationships. That's it's a common thing. It's a very totally. extremely yeah. common thing. And she was like, I cannot get there whatsoever. And it's been a problem in her relationships and her partners feel like they can't satisfy her. And so she's been bringing this toy into the bedroom. And I think for her, we had this pelvic pain specialist on our show and I had her listen to the episode and I was like, you might just have like a weak pelvic floor and like figure out why you're having trouble getting there at all. Like, and then explain that to your partner. And they're like, great. This is just like an added fun thing. It's not like I'm bad at sex and can't satisfy you. Like all of our bodies are just different. And like there's different buttons on everybody. Like some people might love nipple play. I don't care if you ever touch my boobs. It's not for me. I don't give a shit. What a, what a mess. Up. Like what? What is the word I'm thinking of? Like what? you have these great boobs. Like what? A, um, you could play with them. What a waste. Just, it's not an erogenous <laughs> well, zone I mean, for me. Not necessarily a waste. Not a waste. I'm just I mean, saying. It's, it's, it would be cool if you could get off from that. From nipple play. Yeah. You could look at them and that's fun for you. But <laughs> everybody's body is like a different amusement park wonderland. And like every guy doesn't like to get the same blow job. So like every time I have sex, I don't I'm not the same as every girl, you know? Yeah. So they're going to look guys like sure. I well, think that like different guys like their dick sucked in different ways. Well, OK, How but I'm, I'm doing the same. There? You could do it different ways. Some people really like you to cut the balls. I neglect the balls. Unless somebody tells me otherwise, I'm going with what I do. Definitely. I'm going with yeah. my, pr my yeah, recipe. Yeah, my technique. Yeah. But my Have recipe, you ever gotten notes mid no, blowjob? No, I've never gotten a note. I know what I'm doing down there. Yeah. I give a sick blowjob. I don't give them out a lot. Like but how? when I get down there, I go to town. I don't want to half-ass it. 
So if I make the decision to travel (laughs) down, I just go for it. Sure. Like it's the key is enthusiasm. We can't imagine a guy giving notes mid blowjob. Excuse me, can you? It's more positive I would die. I would die than corrective notes. What? You know, I feel like if they're giving corrective notes, it's like, fuck you, this just ended. But if they're like, I feel like they can kind of like, if it's positive reinforcement, being like, oh, you can tell they're really into, interested in something else and that they would like, they want you to escalate your head in that direction. Yes. yes. And I think that like, because so, we do that. Yes. And I would to the left, harder, faster, totally. side to side and sit up and down sure, sure. all the things. I'd love to, like some people like a finger adoring oral. Some people don't. Like if somebody was like, I'm going to teach you how to do this the way I like it. Make it sexy. Make it a group project. Yeah, yeah. You're not like giving me feedback. Like, I hate this. Don't do this. You're like, you know what I would really like? You know, this thing I heard on this podcast sounds really sexy. Yeah. Like, do that. I feel like we had Emily Morris and she like changed my life. And she was like, don't mention it after sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Raina was her, her. She used to just give people notes right after right sex. After. Not in all bed. Time. You said you did. That was great. But a um, couple notes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Like, can you take your phone out and please start writing this down for me? <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. It was, it was fine. Okay. It was like, yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a six out of ten. Yeah. yeah. It's not your best. <laughs> yeah. Right. I got, I got there eventually, but yeah. here's how to get there quicker. You know. I mean, we're. I think, and you're in a relationship where you feel comfortable with with each other. You should absolutely be able to tell what we just say. And I, I would be curious if you agree with this. Guys are basing what they think you want based on the last girl that they knocked it out of the park with. Like, and every woman mm-hmm. is so yeah. vastly different. So it's no fault of their own. You know, we might hear from a woman like he's doing this terrible thing that I hate during oral sex or during whatever it is. And it's like someone liked it. So you're kind well, of depends, but, I guess, on the But I'm saying status. unless you don't unless you tell him yeah. that's not what you don't like. How is he supposed to know? So we, when someone is doing something that you think is weird or you don't like it, someone probably did at one time. Totally. So it's all about like figuring out what you're into. And there's no harm in like letting someone know that. And then I think. At least in my experience, guys have been so appreciative of like, thank you for telling me what the fuck to do. I, I mean, I'm just out here doing what I did to my ex. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> you can definitely tell if someone's been in a long term relationship that they just got out of. Wait, yeah. why? How can <laughs> you tell? Very specific because, script. Very yeah, specific. they're just very. Yes, it's very <laughs> deliberate. You know, you got to talk about this stuff. Like some of my girlfriends love a finger in the butt. It's their favorite <laughs> thing in the world. You tap the butthole and they are getting there. Me, if you go anywhere near that, I will get up and walk away. I hate it so much. But the last girl probably liked it and tons of girls before me. But I hate it. So I have to give feedback. Well, I'm just going to never get off again. No, I think you that's know? great. Yeah. You'll let them in. I'll let to, I'll let a lot of things happen. But <laughs> I don't like it. It's not my favorite thing. What about it? I don't. It's not. My, I mean, I'm with you. But it's I'm not just, my zone. It's, it's just not, I, I'm into it. I know you are. Yeah. I'm saying if somebody fucked Ashley and then fucked me, they probably would be like, she loves a finger in the butt. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll leap. I just, I'm like, get, you can have a time tongue in, in the butt. You can kind of like... do whatever you want back there. It's really none of my business. It feels nice. It's like, I'm, being, <laughs> I'm probably not going to reciprocate it. And that's how I, you smash the patriarchy. No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, you can eat my asshole all day. I don't, I mean, what do I care? It feels nice. It's like, go back there and do whatever. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, if a guy wants to take control, I mean, consensually, obviously, but I'm kind of open to like, whatever you want to try out. I'll take a tongue, but a finger, no. I'll deal with a tongue. You would rather have a tongue. That's your problem. That's not my problem. I don't care. I'll take, I caught a finger in the butt last summer with the, we were in Greece and I fucked the driver. It was a whole thing. He, un, but like, you did like he your Uber driver? Or like driver, driver for the week. <laughs> it um, was very hot, Nick. You should have seen it. I mean, it was like a fantasy. It was just like the hottest guy on the, on the island. With your driver. And it was the driver. And so, but what then, do you mean the driver? You're like, what, so you we like hired a driver, driver for the week. There's one driver in Greece. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> driver, yeah. Sorry, not the one driver. driver in Greece. <laughs> well, we, we just we like when we booked this trip last year, we did Mykonos, and it was like there's not a lot of Ubers in the island, and so you know, here's the Airbnb we booked. They were like, here's the driving service we use, and we had like a main guy, and he would usually come pick us up, and he wasn't like on call waiting all day, but he would pick us up when we needed rides. We all split the cost of it, whatever. And if he couldn't come, he would like send another guy. So this particular day, he sent this new guy. And he was late and he was he was like kind of fucking up our schedule. He was so late and he 
called me and he was like, I'm looking for you. And I was like, I'm looking for you. And then he hung up on me and I was like, oh, kind of turned on. He was like, oh, at his You're attitude. So, toxic, Ashley. <laughs> so we, get, we get in the car and I'm like, oh, that guy's so sexy. I hate this. I'm flirting <laughs> so hard with this guy. And, I and then I up. find out that his like jujitsu teacher. You were flirting? Is, I was flirting. She went hard. You were, yeah, you, were, but you were competing. I was out. I was like, he's hot, but I'm annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's a man, button. I'm going to try. But then he mentioned <laughs> that this other guy he's friends with also works in Mykonos. And he was like a bouncer somewhere, which is very much my style. Yeah, really so then I, security. Yeah, I was really into hearing about the bouncer at so this club. I'm like sitting in the back. I wasn't my ad, I just had an attitude about me. Like just that he was late. We'd already gotten a fight on the phone, you know. So <laughs> brain is flirting with him so, so hard. <laughs> what? I was You're flirting like, with him so about us. his friend though. I wasn't trying to like fuck this guy yeah, and yeah. actually like usurp me. Like we don't go after the same guys. Ever. But you were, yeah, you just thought he was like sexy he and very tattooed sexy. head to toe. So he's Rain is just chatting with him now, just being friendly, trying to mine information about the friend. And he's like, Ashley, what's going on with you back there? He just hones it on me. And then he was like, What's your sign? I was like, oh, what the fuck? What? That's a fuck boy question or like a boy who's trying to fuck at least of course he, yeah. yeah and so i was like i'm a cancer he was like well i'm a scorpio you know what they say about scorpios and cancers so i was like what <laughs> i bet he says that for literally every sign no, they possibly say <laughs> yeah, he's like, no matter what their sign is he's like you know what they say oh, about no. blank and he, scorpios so i'll we'll i'll wrap it up i barely got in the house he was already like what's happening to me like oh you're so sexy i'm gonna come over later and be, give you a massage i'm like oh, okay whatever and he, we, I meet up with him later that night. He offered him a, a That was his move, yeah. So I, we meet up later that night. He comes we meet up. All of us have to stay at the club and take one. I really wanted to go home, but Ashley needed the house. To Everyone get wanted to stay out besides yeah. you, though. So I, we're that's at my this vibe. bar called Scorpios, which so it's a theme night. And he comes and picks me up in the van, just me. I sat up front. <laughs> I was like, this is so awkward. To sit up front in a 16 passenger van. It was a, a little van? Weird. He picked like the van. That was he was our driver. The driver van. Van. So He's the much driver worse. of Greyhound. Like knowing that you were going there just to get laid. I just like to say it was a Benz, but it was like a Mercedes conversion van, whatever. So we do. We end up hooking up. Go back. It was like so hot. Like the whole thing. The sex was, was good. Ever, I mean, it was unreal. I felt like he was kind of choking me out at one point, but I was like, it's okay. You know, like I'm. You know, he's just he does jujitsu. He's if just she dies, practicing. It's fine, yeah. And everything was very hot. Finger in the butt, and I just kind of like let him do whatever, and. Then he left and it was fine. It was like a very much a one night stand. But Raina, I was like saying like I hadn't heard from him like the next day. And she's like, yeah, what did you think? <laughs> That's she, not what this was. She was like, what do you think, Ashley? That's, yeah, of course, the drivers fucked the tourist. I was like, what? Was Wait, like, but was this was this mid vacation? Yeah, there was. We still had a few nights yeah. left. Like I would have gone in for it again. But he was very did like, he keep driving you at least. No, we, then we, we got the other guy. We never saw him again. Yeah, he was on to the next. Tourist. He got what he wanted. Yeah. But yeah. Our interaction was so funny because, of course, no, I wasn't thinking this was like the, my lover, but I was kind of like, I would hug this guy again. I'm here a couple more nights of rain. I was like, yeah, no, I mean, that's not what this was. And <laughs> I was like, no, totally you're right. I get it. <laughs> you know, like, she really like put it in perspective that like, yeah, he had a mission that day. It was to fuck you because he thought you had a bad attitude and it weirdly turned him on. And then he got what he wanted and he's out. And I was like, she's right. That's the only person, though, I will say it's OK and acceptable that they don't at least text you the next day and be like, that totally. was fun. And I appreciate it was that. Amazing. Like, I got so many jokes out of totally. it. Totally. Yeah. And that's just it is what it is. And I still don't actually ever think it's acceptable for somebody to not at least even if they never want to see you again. That was fun. Thanks for a fun night. Yes. I like, think, you know, it takes one second to send a nice text message and not have somebody hate you or feel bad about themselves forever. I'm like very opposed to somebody not just sending like the five seconds. Like I think men are like, if I send her a text message. She's going to think I want to date her. And it's like, no, this was the exact same thing for me, too. It was just sex. Totally. Yeah. And it's totally fine. I mean, but it was like the most quintessential like hookup summer, you know. Did you get laid in? The bouncer? Greece? No. Friend? No. You don't remember? No, I didn't. I was I was trying to like remember what happened. No, definitely did not have sex. I made out with a lot of people at the beginning of that trip randomly. Three in a day. Three in an evening. Oh, that was crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah hot. It, in London. Yeah, you really did start hot. I see. Yeah. yeah. And then it just went downhill from there. <laughs> I know you mentioned that you don't tend to have the same like type in men. Not at How ever. would you if you were to like navigate a situation where you were both interested in the same guy or if there's just like other groups of people of like female friends who are heterosexual and have found themselves like both attracted to the same guy? Like what is your philosophy on dibs? And like communication between friends when it comes to like so funny. shared interests. <laughs> I mean, it's never happened to me that I can remember that like I was really into somebody that another friend was. Is, did I have a situation like this? I mean, I, I did, did. And it 
like we were on this trip and this like a, a few girls and this guy came. It was like a friend of one of the girls and she was seeing somebody. She wasn't interested in him. And me and the other friend both were like kind of flirty with him. And I kind of was into him, but he just was more into her, you know, and it was a little weird. I mean, her and I had to talk about it. Like if I would have I don't know that I thought that I had dibs, I guess I just maybe thought we had more of a connection and I guess I misread the situation. And so we got back from this vacation and he like asked her out and she went out with him and it definitely stung. But I'm like, who am I to begrudge her going out with this guy? Well, clearly was not in love with him and maybe they could be a match. And it was just uh-huh. kind of, you know, I think it's like you just have to be mature about it. But I think there's also worlds in which there's friends that are always calling dibs, always going after guys you'd like. I mean, luckily, we don't really we have one sort of friend of a friend like that. But now she's found someone and she's married now. So she's not doing like that guys anymore, do that but... more than women. Yeah. yeah. But I always find, it, I find yeah. it really Shotgun. frustrating yeah. if like you're it's talking annoying. to a group of guys and you can tell one of them is being very obvious about like wanting to being interested in something more. It depends and, like, on the friend. It's We all have friends that are like, you're like, I, I can't wing woman with her. I can't go out. Like I have a friend mm. who became single and her and I went out and it was like she would right. like literally like box me out of men and I'd be like I'm here too I'm also single this is so rude and it was a pattern it was every time and I was like you don't even like these people you just want to win did she have a, a tendency of like every time you'd go to a bar look around and be like there's no one here let's leave and go to another bar she would walk in and say I'm gonna try every single guy basically <laughs> yeah. she's it's, a little pick me yeah I mean, she's pick me is like a yes yeah. I just would think any guy we talked to she would just be like really into it and like box me out of who we were talking to and I'd be like Hi, I'm, I'm here also and that stuff bothers me because it doesn't feel like the situation you were in where the, this girl was honest and upfront with you and was mm-hmm. like I like this guy this was just like if you get attention I don't get that attention and I don't like yeah. that did you ever address it with her because I feel like that yeah. would really yeah. like that would like fundamentally change the way I see this person and like our friendship but like how do you bring it up it's so tender and difficult. I mean I think that like also it's it's uh, it's uncomfortable you have to get a little comfortable being uncomfortable it just is gonna be what it is it's not these conversations are not easy they're not fun essentially you're saying something about another person's character that you know I think that you can frame it you don't have to say things like I think you're a pick me girl <laughs> and I think you box me out of every conference <laughs> but like I had to be like that situation last night was really bothersome you don't even seem to notice that I left and that like I completely removed myself from this like and you just continue to talk to me about these guys it didn't even occur to you that this bothered me and then it is a little uncomfortable for a little while it's not you're not going to go back to being best friends tomorrow you know maybe that person's going through something they need a lot of validation yeah you can come back together and be fine but it's just gonna be a little awkward for some time I mean you can also just decide what type of interactions and that you have with your friends you know if there's a friend that you want to keep as a friend and she's just the worst pick me to go out with then just do solo dinners with her or like some figure out how you can manage the friendship if it's like actually a huge problem I mean there was a girl like that like I said she's she's married now so she's not on these streets doing that but it was like (laughs) she just had to get the attention she just had to win and kind of be competitive and I was like I can't this is not for me do you you think pick me is more of a personality trait or a phase that's an interesting question I I think you could I think you can grow out of anything or you could be, be that forever but yeah, i'm like i feel they... like some people can like you know like phase wise maybe they just went through a bad break i think i think just like, call. and they're in a funk mm-hmm. the next thing you know they're just they become pick me's rather than they are pick me's absolutely and I think guys cool. can be like that too absolutely. you know it probably happens i'm guessing both with men and women when they put so much of their self-worth in just having a partner just having someone especially if the relationship ended like not on their terms and so they just like they can't handle being alone or being single. So they just don't even realize their mm-hmm. energy they're putting out there because it's just like I need to have someone. I think it's really good insight. And that is kind of what happened here. Uh, and I think people. Yeah, you can grow out of it. I think that like you need that type of validation and attention right now. And you can find either a partner that is a really secure relationship or you can find interests and hobbies to find other validation through. But yeah, I've seen people just grow up and grow out of it. And then sometimes you have those friends. You're like, I'm just not going to. If I'm going to go out and look for guys tonight, that's not the person I'm going with. Yeah. You just repurpose that friend. I think you grow out of so much of that stuff. I think like being a little boy crazy, a little girl crazy is a little bit of a phase. You know, some people, of course, are like that for their whole lives. And sometimes people get put in their place and just or get they, they're able to reflect a little bit. What do you think is the best way to get them out of it? If they're acting like that? Yeah. I feel like you just stop hanging out with them. Well, I mean. Phase them out. I even Forever? Th- 
No, not forever. Till the end of the phase. No, you're just. You're I'll just, tell you, I've done this. I, I mean, in a, in a kind, loving way. As, do as they a, receive it as well? As an at adult, first, yeah. I they mean, do? I just had a friend that kept putting guys first, very flippantly, just kind of like we'd have plans, and if this guy came along, she'd bail on the plans. And I think she wanted a partner so badly that she felt like it took precedence. But I was like. Your friends are really important over some guy that may or may not work out. Like, I remember one time I was trying to make a plan with her to get drinks. And she was like, well, I might have a date. I'm like, first of all, this is actually a terrible way to go about the world. Like, you're waiting around to see if this guy from Hinge reaches out. You know, like a much better way to be would be to like live your life, make plans and fit in the guy when you can instead of waiting around and giving off like desperate energy. But yeah, whatever. canceling specific plans with friends and the hopes that. Like, That's, yeah, for right. some guy who's keeping you on retainer. Oh, yeah. That yeah. happens a lot. I, I talked Absolutely. about it and she t- she definitely took the note. I think sometimes you need a close friend to tell you how it looks from the outside. You're so in it. You're just so you know desperate for a relationship or whatever it is that you're feeling that you can't actually see how your actions may be perceived or how you could be hurting one of your friends. And I think it mean made it was it changed. Well, she's also somebody that's receptive to feedback and I don't feel scared to give her feedback. And I think that's how you can judge the friendship is after I have this conversation with the person, does the behavior change? Because if you form it, if you if you form the sentences as like this hurts my feelings and I care about you, I want to have a good relationship with you, but you're doing this stuff that's like making it impossible for me to enjoy being friends with you. That person should at least say to themselves, like, I love this person and I've hurt them and that matters to me. I don't have to like validate how like I yes, you can validate how you feel, but like I don't have to tell them they're irrational constantly like. I hurt you and that feels bad and I don't want to do that is like what the response should be. Yeah. She was really receptive to the feedback. Have you had ever had a breakup with a friend? Yeah, definitely. Over. There's definitely people I've grown apart from that I don't mean you come growing back apart. to. But growing apart is kind of a natural, you know, right? Like fully like don't talk to me anymore. Or it's just like, yeah, there's an abrupt like, hey, we can't be friends. Yeah, I had this girl like in my late 20s that it was just it was already a relationship. I just defended all the time. Like people just had a problem with her constantly. And I was always just like, but not me. I, I It's great. She's so good to me. And the toxicity just became like too much. And she just did like back to back things. And I just had to be like, here's I, I just this can't be a part of my life. Anymore. Was it to you or other people it involved? The things involved me. Um, And it was just so much toxicity and lying also. And I was like, here's a bunch of stuff. And it's just like never going to fly with me. And she was like, you're a bitch. And I was like, if that's all you have on me, I have all this on you. We are okay. Need a break from reality? Life got you down. Well, cheer up, Buttercup, because Paramount Plus has your great reality escape. That's right. Escape into new seasons of the biggest competition shows out there like Survivor, Big Brother, and The Challenge World championship with the boldest personalities from the family of Stallone, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars and Queen of the Universe and the wildest drama that's right, Are You the One is on there, plus hundreds of previous seasons all streaming at your fingertips. See, reality ain't so bad, your great reality escape awaits you at Paramount Plus. Stream now. If you're listening to this podcast, chances are that you have you are currently wasting money on apps that you're no longer using. Ain't that the truth? And you're probably wasting hundreds of dollars a year. What if I told you there's an app out there that will find all the apps that you're not using, that you've even forgotten about, that you're paying a monthly subscription to and cancel it for you? Well, it's true. It's out there. It's available. And it's so easy. It's called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Try it free for 30 days. In fact, over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Mm -hmm. You could be wasting money and not even realizing. Rocket Money helps you find those forgotten subscriptions so you can stop paying for ones you don't use. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but in actual total, It's closer to 200. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money now. Rocket Money will easily and quickly find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. I saved over $1,000 by uh, using Rocket Money. So who only, who just, it's like a fun game. Just write us how much you saved, you know? Stop throwing away your money, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. 
if either of you were friends with Raquel. Oh, thank God. Thank you so much for bringing this up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, what would you do? If she did that to me? No, or... no, not to you. Oh, oh God. I, I'm like, if I'm friends with Raquel, I have so many questions. Like, uh, like shoot. Uh, I'm Raquel. Uh, okay. Let's role play. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like maybe for added incentive, like family friends have been in each other's lives for a really long time. Yeah. So this is not just like a newer friend. Like this is someone who you are like motivated more so we than used maybe to do with pageants other friends. Together. Yeah, like you have a big shared history. <laughs> we used to do yeah. pageants together. Yeah. Yeah. We both got I'm, aged out. I'm trying to get, and we cried about it. I'm trying to get to the root of if you were so manipulated into like believing what you were doing was like okay or yeah. that it was like, being accepted. Like our, the whole brain, I hate to speak on this even before Raina has because she's the main fan. I'm only just new to the culture. But I read something somewhere that Brack held like maybe it's she just thought what she was doing was like justified because of what she'd been told about the relationship with Ariana. But then on the, on the other side, it's like she's not that dumb and you shouldn't give her that. She much is credit. that dumb. She is really that dumb. You think she's that dumb? No. She's not that dumb. She's pretty dumb. She's so dumb. Right? Does everyone know that the Pope drinks rosé on the balcony? <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, yeah, you got it. She might be just <laughs> dumb enough to convince herself that it's true. But I mean, deep down, she knows. That's a person that places the validation of men above literally everything else. So that's yeah. the primary thing. If that was my... Fr- she, she said some things that are very interesting to me that sort of minimize the... the grandiosity of really what happened here she said it was a mistake i got caught up in the moment she says things like she picked up the wrong brand of soap at the grocery store like you were living this double life for so long and i think that people have affairs and they cheat with their friends with they they cheat with their friends significant other this is she didn't murder anybody but to live this life and to be lying to everybody and there's yeah. such, such a web with like James Kennedy and he's friends with Tom Sandoval and it's like you have just created such a terrible situation with all these people. Like, was it worth it? Well, I think there's like this spectrum of like she was this lost soul that's been totally manipulated by this complete, you know, sociopathic narcissist pathological liar whatever it is he's all those things huh do you really think he's all those things (laughs) i just throw out a bunch of terms i think he's probably some of them um and then there's like another the end of the spectrum that she's this insane manipulator as well and the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle like it doesn't have to be one or the other i think there's was definitely some manipulation involved but she's not completely blind to like what she was doing like wasn't there didn't the one of the first nights after they hooked up she brought flowers over to the house like you have to know this is like insane behavior as for him i mean i i really think he's really slimy it's not yeah i think he's i think they're just selfish self-centered and weak actually and i feel like people throw the term narcissist and sociopath around a lot but one of the main characteristics of narcissism is a total inability to take responsibility for your own actions he is the king of i'm sorry but and that is a narcissistic that is true i mean I, I know I don't want to me- I don't want to overuse those terms. Just yeah, to be clear. I don't yeah. either. But I, I I'm so like against it that like then uh, to the point where like no one is because everyone is. Yes. But if someone was same with I would, I w- Yes. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Well, the <laughs> Internet one, you yeah. know, it's like yeah. fine. You know, <laughs> like yeah. apparently now gaslighting is just saying I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and, like and sometimes people aren't narcissistic, pathological liars. They're just an asshole. There's an asshole. Or they're self-centered or they're going through like a very self-centered stage of their life. Yes. They're like in a rut. Yeah. You know, we were talking about this earlier. You know, I have a friend who's dating someone who it just sounds like he's going, he's in a rut and I've been in a rut before. And then I think about my other guy friends who have been in a rut. And I think about when you're in a rut and you don't know, you're not confident yourself and you're just like, not sure what you're supposed to do, especially with your career And you see all your friends having a little success or maybe it's success with like, you know, women, if you're a guy or, you know, vice versa in dating, you become this self-centered, just insufferable person to be around. And, and you don't see, that's the worst part is you can't see it because you're just such a victim in your own mind of like, nothing's working out for you. And, uh, you know, like this. And then, you know, you're always want to talk about your problems around your friends and you just become this unsufferable, like just piece of, of crap. And then it's just easier to justify your decisions because you're always the victim in your head just because life's just hard for you. And so like, that's the thing, like when you're in a rut, you know, when you're down on yourself, it's just, it's very easy to become self-centered. It doesn't necessarily make you a, a narcissist. It just maybe, you know, you're kind yeah. of in a, you know, we all have narcissism in our, in our, totally. in our, we all have an ego. Yeah. But I mean, I said this on our show when, it, when you see an insane cheating affair type situation, 
yes, you could be a complete narcissist or you have really, like you said, convinced yourself that you were so victimized that you're justified in doing whatever the fuck. And I mean, I think you do see it with men who have had problems with their partner, or their wife or whatever it may be, and haven't been able to articulate them or work through them or yeah. talk to talk to anyone about it. So they've just been in this victim mode for so long that they can feel like they can do whatever. It's totally the wrong way of thinking. Yeah. But well, it's sometimes just like it could what you're just saying. be a, a self-destructive. Sometimes people like use sex as an outlet in a very unhealthy way mm -hmm. because they have a you know, uh -huh. a negative history with sex, you know. Yeah, but you guys know more than me. I mean, just based on the history of him and the show, like, he just seems like a bad person. He doesn't seem great. You know, the really... I don't Especially get bad person when he from got her, stopped by the TMZ. Did you see that one? I've seen everything. Which one? The TMZ, <laughs> like the the t shirt, his his the t shirt thing. His response also, to the t shirt. Wait, what was the word he kept using incorrectly? It made me laugh so hard. I was like, he's he said like it's the unenthusiasm. Yeah. Unenth he kept saying unenthusiasm. The unenthusiasm. I kept saying it. I was like, it's not a word. But but that's what I didn't. Under it's just like so it. You did like Tom. It's like Tom. No, I read it right. You called her fucking lazy. Yes, basically. Right. Nobody misinterpreted yeah, this. Yeah, no one understood. Like you, and that's why we think you're an asshole because you called her fucking lazy. Here's a person who's like trying to connect with you emotionally and, and is in a committed relationship. And then finally, you know, even though despite not feeling connected and feeling seen by you, decides to have sex with you, God forbid they have their t shirt on. And then on national television, you called her fucking lazy lazy and then he like doesn't understand that that's what he said and yeah. says no 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 that's not what i meant i just mean she's fucking lazy i know he was like she yeah. was unenthusiastic it's like that's that's what you just said yeah we know yeah. We, 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 we get yeah. it you know this because you've been on reality tv i i think that like i say this all the time like the reward center in your brain is totally like warped versus like day-to-day -day people because He's getting rewarded for this type of behavior yeah. on some level. He's gotten so much more famous. They all have. And I don't want to do reality television. I just, you know, you see people that are on reality TV and they'll say to you, like, I'm not like that, but I got paid to be like that. So that's fun. I get I get paid to fight with people. I don't want to. Right. Like you you watch and I know she's kind of walked some of the behavior back, but you watch the woman like Lala and we like her. We've podcasted with her. We're like, you're like. This level of like screaming and insult hurling and standing up and acting completely unhinged, it feels like someone really said, go so hard, don't let up. Like yeah. you'll come out on top if you just go as hard as you possibly can. Like, so it's, yes, you're being rewarded for like insane behavior. That's not a hot take for you. You've been in, in the biz, <laughs> but it's like, it's not real life. And I just, it's probably a lot of why some you see. Some more than others though. But I think with yeah. some of the Vanderpump cast, it is like that where I don't think they know the difference between filming the show and reality <laughs> Yes. Anymore. Well, you said something on your show that I thought was really interesting. You were talking about like what he would have to do to like make a comeback. Yeah. And you were saying that he has to like really apologize and mean it. He has to understand what he did what was wrong about what he did yes he doesn't know when when he says i'm sorry he has no idea what he's saying i'm sorry <laughs> for crazy to me. you know he's saying i'm sorry to like shut up like he's like saying please be quiet please he's be like quiet. saying Leave i'm sorry i know cheating's wrong right <laughs> allegedly maybe this is more of a question for you uh -huh. like you've been really into it and into invested it. And so, like, you're stuck in an elevator with Tom Sandoval. Like, what do you, how would you approach it? I think I feel so negatively about this person that I, like, can't even, I, I would just avoid them. I don't even find, like, really? I don't think it sounds fun to me to talk to this guy. Like, Raquel, I could at least, like, do an interview with or be on a show with her. And I think it also speaks to your previous question of, like, what was, if this was your friend, how would you approach it? It would depend on their response to the situation. Raquel doesn't seem that sorry. The video of, of her just laughing is like really insane and sick and horrible to watch. Which one? Well, specifically when they get off stage at the reunion and Tom and her are in the dressing room and yeah. they're just laughing and they have just been like Did annihilated. Did you watch the extended no. clip? So the extended clip actually cut out quite a bit. That makes total sense. Okay. And Absolutely. so after we should have thought of that. it was more than I anticipated. Yeah. I'm, I was actually surprised that they like cut out because they, they there's a like meat on the bone, so to speak. When they left that room, she, she sat down and she got emotional and was like, I don't want to be this person. I don't mm -hmm. want to be like this. Yes. Yada, yada, yada. And it, it came across as authentic. So if I was friends with the person and they, her, and they said to me, I am so humiliated by my actions. I cannot fucking believe I did this. At least there's a glimmer of hope in the friendship where I could be like, OK, there's some very deep seated guilt mm -hmm. and I, I see a world in which you go get help. 
I don't see that in him. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, yes, I, I'm we, Rain and I should we know better. We should have known that there was the editing right. there that if they didn't get off of that stage and immediately be like, that was so crazy, you know, and like start laughing and yucking it up. Could no. you be her friend? Like, what would you say to her? Her as, like, friend or his friend? Her friend. I think there's more hope for her than him, for sure. Yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like she's redeemable yeah. enough, a little bit, maybe. Yeah. I, I definitely think she was manipulated a little bit. I don't, not to the point where you can let her off the hook not, not or at somehow. All. Um, and I think she, I do, like her, her origin story with her childhood, I, I am shocked that that's not a bigger story than it mm. is. Oh, to is like, it really traumatic? Yeah. Well, she was like, given away by her biological mother and raised by her grandparents by her aunt by her, her aunt, aunt. Either and way, the it's other so sister fucked up. i mean yeah talk about a situation where you're just like guarantee that person's going to be a validation nightmare mm -hmm. you know where there's uh -huh. like how and then you, you put them in pageants because yeah. that will be so great for her self-esteem and self-confidence right. yeah so <laughs> and like, like her feeling yeah. of how do you create a validation monster like it, you right. know like but so the sister also the mom kept the sister yeah right? what see this so, is and this actually matters and i no, would it fight anyone who says it doesn't like it, it should be part of the story we are anybody who has a traumatic upbringing there's a difference between an excuse and an ex explanation and people yeah, often don't yeah. want to hear explanations because people will like well that's not an excuse they want to nothing somebody. to do with an excuse yeah. it's just like how do we understand why people make the decisions that they do there is a reason why tom did what he did i don't know what it is i don't know what his origin story is i don't know at what point in like the you know the timeline of tom sandoval's life where he like someone fucked him up he felt like he could never be alone and so he in every single relationship made sure the replacement was already picked out yeah, and that there was totally. actually overlap in a training period between the two Ooh. so that way there would never be a moment of like self-sufficiency and like not having a partner sure but i don't i'm not i don't know what happened to him something right. happened to him that has totally. caused him to uh basically when push comes to shove like dismiss people's feelings mm -hmm. in lieu of his own you know that's let's think because like he thinks of himself as an amazing friend definitely yeah because, because in most Talk cases he probably is right he's probably very loyal he will lie for his boys he'll have their, their uh -huh. boys but he'll always and he's a cheerleader he's probably always there to rally the troops and bring every kumbaya everyone together because in all those situations no one's stepping on his toes you know, but yeah. it, when he's emotionally like stuck, like all bets are off, mm -hmm. you know, but I just want to know that's that's what I want to get to the bottom of with him. It's like, why do you and then no matter how he answers that question, I'm like, no, you still haven't answered my question. Like, how, uh, why do you think you did what you did? You know, what's what ha what? Why are you broken? But at some point, mm -hmm. like if I'm Ariana, I'm like, I don't care. And we read Not this Ariana, quote on yeah, the podcast but... and it really resonates with me. And they said this person, I forgot who said it. Who you are is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. I love that. Yeah. And I feel like if I'm dating that person or I'm friends with that person, I'm like, I have empathy for your trauma. I have real empathy for what Raquel went through as a child. But you don't then use that as a reason to do unthinkable things to the people that you should, that you yeah. can love. You should try to go to therapy and figure out what, I, I know everybody doesn't have access to therapy, but it can't always be my problem, the trauma that you went through. Yeah. Tom and I don't know enough, you know. I haven't, I don't, I haven't watched until till, till the reunion. But um, I know a lot. I've had spent hours with people giving me like all of the the rundown over the past decade. But you were saying that he like prides himself on being this good friend. I bet he's the kind of guy that like when he does something for his friends, he's like, I'm such a good friend. Like he like when he gets some batteries. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Let him get the Sorry, guys. I don't know. No, you're, you're, doing you're doing great. You're doing great. Sweet. Like I think he like <laughs> is almost. I, I, no, you're right. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, but you are. He, you, you know how people are doing stuff to look yeah. good. Oh, yes. It's actually not genuine. So no, they can sit back and be like, I'm such a good friend. I would do Every anything, time he though. does a favor for someone, he accounts for it's it. Okay. Yeah. He yes. score keeps. Like he, it's, score uh, keep. yeah. he doesn't give freely, as like my therapist would say. Like it's genuinely always as like, oh, I you owe me a favor now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a scene years ago where he's screaming at Jax on the screen and he's like, I am such a good fucking friend to all of you. And he's like, he really hypes what a good friend he is. <laughs> he's gotta let everybody know. And it's like he did these things and that's nice, but he's going to let you know that you need to pay him back at some point. Right. So they're, I, so they're actually not genuine. I just want to like, you know how like Tom well, at the reunion and oh, this was part of, oh yeah, an uncut footage. I go home and watch this. Yeah. So like Lisa has a chat with Tom and she's just basically saying, you got to like take accountability. You got to fall on your sword. You got to apologize. I know that all these people fucking hate you right now, but like life goes on, time heals all wounds and just like take your beating basically. Right. And he's just like, I'm not a fucking like serial killer. You know, and he was like showing emotion because it's like 
But I almost kind of felt pity for him in that moment because the way they were talking to him, obviously calling him a psycho and a narcissist and things like that. He's just like, I haven't killed. He was like thinking literally like, but I haven't killed someone as if he didn't understand that, like what he did to Ariana is incredibly painful and hurtful. And in the scars, it could, you know, it can give someone the level of distrust and of, you know, abandonment mm-hmm. and like just stabbing someone in the, you know, and Lala called him a liability at the reunion. You know, it's just like, you're, you're fucking dangerous to be around. And I couldn't agree more with Lala in the sense that like, in the context of what I, that's what I want to know with Tom. It's just like, okay, you don't think you think Lala's nuts and you think, you know, this and that, and you don't think you're dangerous, but like convince me how it's safe for someone, so for another woman to date you, to trust you, to unconditionally give themselves to you and say, I trust you with, you know, going out, out with the boys. Why should you have a history of doing this? He will sell you on the circumstances. He'll say she didn't have sex with me and I was worried she was going to kill herself. And with Kristen, too, like she acted so crazy. I think he will sell you on the circumstances. Yeah, but then you say, well, hey, listen, it happens in every relationship. So are you saying that to date you, that person can't ever have a bad day or a bad week or a bad month? That person can't feel down or not feel sexy. They can't be in a rut and get out of it. Are you, is that, I, is that yeah, the only guarantee? Him. I mean, am I, I think he's, yeah, I, I don't like there. I, to, it's, it's not, he's not redeemable in that and in, in, to be a trusted partner in my eyes ever. Sorry. I mean, yeah. it's, I'm not a once a cheater, always it's a cheater. Ever. But this, <laughs> Lev, I'm, I think you always are going to do this. If I found out you are, I don't think you're going to be rewired you know, right. <laughs> by a new partner. If I found out you and I are such like a peak level of friendship, but if I found out that every day for seven months, you lied to me, you went behind my back with the other person in my life that meant the most to me in the world. I don't know how I would ever, I, it's not even, try, I don't know how I would ever recover. Yeah. Like, I don't know how she's ever going to trust another person again. I, no, she can. I hope so. And I hope she just says, this is such a specific situation and, and no one would ever do this again. But it would fuck me up for a long time. Do we know his parents? Did they cheat? I mean, a lot of this stuff yeah, has like been so. When you see someone cheat so brazenly, you can usually find the cheating in the. That's a, again you, not an excuse. I'm just out of curiosity. You can look back and like Ariana should be able to see all the the signs that she chose to ignore. I think her friend picker has been off. I do. I, mm-hmm. I, I you know when you say, well, they haven't done that to me, and you say that a lot. Like you need to reevaluate your totally. friend picker. Because, mm-hmm. you know, people don't treat you. You're not that special. No yeah. one is. No one's that special that they treat everyone else we shady, like a piece of shit. Yeah. And they're somehow going to treat you differently. They're not. Yeah. You're just having. Your time will come. You're just either or you're looking the other way because, yeah. you know, you don't want to believe that 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 can happen. She does ride for people so hard. And I think with you and me, it would be particularly painful because you're not that kind of person. I would be I would be like, I, I can't believe I misjudged this person's character. With Ariana, she rides for all these people that no one else really likes. Well, that, and that's we've we said this. We had a falling out with somebody um, so many years ago, and this person had had falling out with everybody before that. And we just kind of knew our, our time would come. You know, like it wasn't yeah. we didn't think we were so special that it would never happen. But we were like, ah, eh, this person's really fun to be around. And for now, you know, kind of keep them at an arm's length. And sure enough, you know, it's a real pattern. And so th- I think that's something everyone should understand. Like, it really is the quote, like, you're not that special. Yeah. Like, the pattern mm-hmm. will eventually. Well, I, I also don't think people, change, but... I think mo- especially in, to- in today's world, uh, when people choose friends, I don't think I don't think they consider character. I don't even think they think about it. I think they might tell them like they would say it's one of those things where. Really? You know, everyone. If on you, reality uh, TV or in real life? In real life. <laughs> if I ask every, if I if ask anyone, do you think you're loyal? Everyone says yes, 100 percent across the board. Every, no one says I'm not loyal. Okay. But most, a lot of people, there's spectrums of loyalty, even though everyone considers them very loyal. I don't so, ever lead with that for my. I, you know, I but guess, if, you, if I were to ask you, do you think you're loyal? But like, but, were you gonna say no? Well, I don't think I'm disloyal, but like, what does it mean? Well, exactly. But I, I'm, I'm simply saying people will describe themselves as certain. Yeah, things. I don't know that loyalty is the peak character that I'm looking for. In a, it's no, I agree, but I'm saying... Like, it's I, almost when, like unconditional love. People, I'm like, eh, that's when, not a thing. When people pick friends, <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't think a lot of times in today's world, they're thinking, do I, do I like their character? Mm-hmm. What do I think they stand for? Oh, I, think, I do. I, I, I know, but I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to take your word for it. But I think a lot of people don't. I think a lot of people think, uh, are they fun? Uh, are they a cool hang? Uh, do they make me feel good about myself? What will they do for me? 
Will they keep my secrets? You know, are they loyal to me? And I don't think any of those things have anything to do with people's character. And yet so many people will select friends. And if I'm being honest, I think that's what uh, Ariana has a history of doing. I think I definitely agree. Some people certainly don't. I That's all I do is, is like assess someone's character. I think it's like I'm constantly thinking of like the way they treat other people, their relationships they have in their life. Like, I don't know. What's I think your character? So as someone who prioritizes values, that, like how, know? how, what are your kind of character red flags? So like, what's your, mm-hmm. what's your care, like your friend picker or relationship picker when it comes to, you know, thinking about someone's character? Well, one of them is if they've had friends for a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you have friends from, I mean, whatever life you, you're a certain mm-hmm. age, you know, it's been so long since you've been in high school, but still I have friends from high school, you yeah, know, like do, what are your oldest do you have friends? friends from every yeah, time of your life? Question. Like, yeah. High school, college, your 20s, your 30s, you know, I, or do you always have a story of friend breakups here and there? And I'm always assessing what people have going on in their life. I think that's probably my number one. Um, I think that there's certainly types of friends that are really fun and you sit back and you realize that all they did was kind of talk about themselves the whole time and actually not actually really want to hear from you. And they were just using you as a sounding board to tell their fun, crazy stories and, you know, hear your or your feedback on on them. I mean, I'm trying to think of, I could probably do this forever, but yeah. I think that's my number one. Well, we like met each other. I was like, does she have a lot of friends? You know, what? Is, she's close to their family. She's a lot of longtime friends. I look for um, how do you describe situations in which you were quote unquote wronged. Friends that get fired from jobs a lot and then they tell you it's never their fault. It's always a situation where it's somebody else's fault. That is a huge red flag. To all me. my exes were crazy, but for work. That's I mean, with a yeah. man. If that's he tells it. you all my exes were crazy, I'm like, what did you do? You make them all <laughs> crazy. Like, we, had, make- we had somebody tell us all their exes were narcissists, all three of us. And we were like, all of them. You just you're just finding these terrible people. They're all horrible to you. You did nothing. So I'm, I'm just looking at patterns in your life and I can't take responsibility for relationships ending, jobs ending, big red flag for me. Right. Well, there's also different friends for different things, yeah. right? You know, I have friends that I just like to party with. I have friends I like to travel with. I have friends that like, if I'm just having a bad day, I want to call them. I have pick me up at the hospital friends, you know? Like there's I got to d- do that this week. Yeah, you do. Let me <laughs> talk to you about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have friends that like, I, I have like two best friends, Ashley and this one other girl, and they both give me very different advice. And I really like that because I have one friend that really actually tends to commiserate with me more like she feels really protective of me and her and I can just like go back and forth I have another friend that's just like let's diffuse it let's let it go and I I, I'm not trying to hear that sometimes I'm looking for like an ally but both of those things are great and like just different friends for different types of feedback and advice you know I just I wouldn't necessarily go to everybody for everything and I think Raina always we say this with people you might want to date too and friends is you do what you say you're going to do. It's just like the top, top. Yeah. You know, everybody gets a pass. Sometimes you got shit going on in your life. You can't make it. You need to bail on plans. But like somebody that really is, you cannot count on over promise under the liver. It, what's yeah. the point? You know, and I, I, I know we're all wired differently and both of us, you know, have a friend or two that is flaky and you know, they may or may not show and they're a value add when they do. They're so fun. You let them be around, but really with, partners too it's so important is and that was what we really were vetting each other as we started to consider starting a business together was i think we were that was the number one thing we were both you know secretly looking for in the other person and making sure they had it i've had to like repurpose friends where i've like (laughs) gotten more information and i'm like i'm not trying to fuck with this and they can just become like a little less important in your life huh what is it i promoted them to (laughs) promote them to a fan (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Promote them to a listener of the podcast. Or no, right. They're, no they're just in the DMs. Um, yeah. Well, we, I worked for Danny Meyer and we would fire people. We would say we're promoting them to a guest. <laughs> like they're guests of the restaurant. Now they don't work here. So I think that you just get sometimes somebody's going through something or you're like, oh, I don't. Totally. This is it's always somebody. It's always something with you. And I just this is not an energy I can have in my life. Have you done that with people where you're like, I thought this was going to be a little different and now i need to change the terms of this friendship uh yeah i'll just phase them out you phase them out you're a phaser outer yeah yeah well yeah i mean because i have like lifelong friends mm-hmm. but like you know this, that's been more like la because like la is a, is a city full of professional friends okay you know people who like they're kind of star fuckers and they you know they're the friends who will like pick you up at an airport they'll do any they'll they're they're like they're free assistants and they position themselves as friends okay <laughs> what you never, you don't Wait, see this. I haven't lived here that long. I don't feel like I don't have one of them yet. I want to have more of them. <laughs> I'm an airport pickup friend. <laughs> Two people at my birthday party offered to pick me up at the hospital 
And I was like, we're not close enough for you to be offering but that's, this. But that's like, that's what he's but saying. But that's what you're saying. Yeah, they they like they love reality TV stars. They love any star. So they 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 smell blood by like it's they they will find kind of new celebrities ish, uh-huh. right? Who like are kind of fish out of water in L.A. They don't know what they're doing. Is this happening to us? <laughs> no. Uh, they have no shame. They'll like come up to you, and they're very aggressive people. Very, and they can be very charming. And they're and they'll do you a favor. And they're they're always there to do you a favor. This is so fascinating. And <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a there's a lot of them. How do you sniff it out? The favor. Uh, Teach us. Is the favor the first? Yeah, but do I have to reciprocate the favor? Well, you just have to observe. Is that or is that person really a ride or die friend, or is the, or is there a, a a a power dynamic shift in the friendship? They'll also call themselves like managers or producers or things like that because they like bring them a brand deal or some shit like that. At the end of the day, they're just like <laughs> free assistants. Uh, I mean, I'll take it. They're they're all over LA. Even last night at Arena's birthday, people were like, you guys have so many friends here. And it's like, we kind of already had some friends here that we just followed some friends from New York and, well, my best friend, my other best friend from Atlanta, but that moved here. And then we keep finding other people from New York. So we really have just sniffed out <laughs> only New York people like us <laughs> that have like moved here. So I'm trying to think if I've encountered this. You would yeah. know it if you. Yeah. You would know it. We're not famous enough. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I'm famous enough. Yeah. Maybe nobody wants to do that. Nobody it's it's, not, it's not something you really want, to be honest. The I, airport pickup. You can't trust those people. I'll take an airport The airport pickup, pick yeah. Like, it's it can be nice, but it's not, nothing's free in this world. <laughs> That's, you know, it's, it's important to remember it, that. It comes with a cost. Yes, yeah. 100%. I say, like, I'm glad that we moved to L.A. Like, it, I'm glad I spent my early 20s all of my 20s and my early 30s in New York and then I moved to LA because I think when you're so young and you move to LA it's just harder to sniff that out like I'm just I'm not at an age where anybody's going to use me for anything I can see you from a mile away I'm not going to give you anything that I don't feel like giving like I've been through this before yeah I'm not that scared of getting like quote unquote used by somebody and then being like what just happened because like you're not going to get anything from me that I don't feel like giving you willingly yeah, I, I I do want to validate people. We have a lot of like younger listeners. I feel like they're watching us thrive here really quickly. And it's like we've kind of been building friendships for a really long time and, you know, have we travel all over. We have friends everywhere. But I I feel like it. W- I think this city in your 20s would be tough to yeah. to move. You here really and- have to have boundaries. Yeah. Out, yeah. Out here. Uh, is it time for texting office hours? Indeed it is. All is right. This headphones on. This is headphones on time, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll come back, and I, I have a couple more uh, questions and uh, a debate I need you guys to uh, solve for us. How's it going? Hey, um, I'm Gretchen. I'm 29, and a guy I was seeing thinks that I am a literal witch. Okay. Uh, just to confirm, are, are, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am not. Okay, great. Uh, why does he think you're a ri- uh, oh, rich? Why does he think you are a witch? <laughs> We had a conversation that I thought was a lighthearted conversation Okay. where I have been like making earrings lately. And I mentioned wanting to sell them at the local witches market, um, which is like a coffee shop bar that does the witches market. It's like they'll sell crystals and candles and shit like that. And I mentioned it and he was like, is this when you tell me you're a witch? And because I thought it was a lighthearted conversation, I said, no, I'm not a witch, but I wouldn't tell you if I was one. <laughs> um, <laughs> True. You know. Um, I love her. And uh, yeah. And so it, I kept like trying to, I said, I'm just gothic and happened to be into some witchy things. And he said, what kind of witchy things? And I said, pointy hats and broomsticks, you know, <laughs> then every other thing I said, I did say like, I've made a spell jar with my friends once. Um, and I made one for my dad for Father's Day last year. And uh, yeah, he um, didn't take it so well. He he continued to have the conversation with me in like a joking way. And then he like withdrew for the next couple of days. And I will also say that the last time I saw him, so this conversation was over text. The last time that I saw him um, as he was leaving, I was like, I have a crush on you, but I wasn't, I said it in like a joking way, but I meant it. Like I do have a crush on him, but I said it like I was annoyed by it. Um, and so then a few days after that witch conversation, he um, wanted to have a phone call and was like, I was kind of freaked out that you um, told me you have a crush on me. And also the like witch magic stuff really freaks me out. Okay. And, yeah. Describe this guy. He is 
really receptive and he's really easy to talk to. And I feel like incredibly comfortable around him. What about him as receptive? Of um, to everything but witchcraft. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Except for you being yeah, a witch. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so was he a friend before? Is that this? Like how to, uh, cause he didn't know. I met him on Tinder. Okay. And when we first met, we just went on a couple of like trail walks. Um, so I think we went on like three and it was like really easy. It wasn't, it didn't seem romantic. And I kind of thought he would be like more of a friend type person. But now but you then, don't. Now you want a romantic now, relationship with him. Yes. Okay. So, I think you're so funny and cool. And I just don't know if this guy's like. You're, I just I'm like an, I just don't like his that he got spooked <laughs> by, literally like, by your hocus but, pocus yeah. and also yeah. like you're just well, kind of witchy like that's kind of dope it, so I guess that he has had multiple interactions with people who identify as witches what? or people who are live, into magic uh, what, what part of the country do you, do you live in Salem? Salem? I live in Texas okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I've been to a few parties in LA where uh, some people have gotten together and 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 earnestly call themselves witches. Is this a bad thing these days? It's like I I I identify as. Witchy. Well, here's my question for you: If I if you're being really crap. yeah, actually, I actually is a witch. Uh, people think she I'm predicts a witch. stuff all the time. My question for you is: Do you feel like he is leaning on this as like an mm. easy out because maybe he? It's it's hard to say like you know I like you as a friend, but maybe not a romantic partner. I'm really not sure. Like it, like when it happened, I was very confused because I've like never been accused of something like that before. I don't know. Like, I can't tell if it's a cop out or not because he, he told me a little bit. I mean, he didn't give me any details, but he basically said that he's encountered multiple people who were that way and that bad things started happening in his life. Okay. And that it's like a blanket, like, no for him. Like he just wants to stay away no from him entirely. Well, th that was my question for Nick. I was just curious if you, when she was telling the story, if your immediate reaction was, you know, just to say it harshly, like this is a, he's just not that into you situation. And that's his excuse because I don't think so. Actually. Okay. You think it's, he's just scared. He's scared. It just seems it. like such a very specific thing to, right. It just it also, would also be really unfair. Cause if this uh, is something that you're kind of into, it's not, he also, you, the way you described it is, 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 is like, he was kind of like, you know, communicating. It's like, hey, this is on yeah. my mind, you know, as, mm -hmm. as if you were supposed to do something with information, which is like, I guess my question is like, after he brought it up, like, w what was your response? I'm assuming it's a, well, fear not. I am not a witch, you know, kind right. of thing or fear not. <laughs> do you feel like you were kind of messing with this guy? Like you were trying to fuck with him and you're like, I am a witch. Look, I have things. And he just doesn't really have like a good sense of humor about it. Yeah, he does. No, I, he wear khakis? I don't think so. Right. Like what's this, um, is this like because I was joking man? around about it. And I when I mentioned like making spell jars before and I said, like, I'm not trying to put spells on people. Like if I want to put spells on anybody, I want to put them on myself. Um, and like to be happy and shit like that um and he was like so you're a good witch and i sent him a gift of uh glenda the good witch so i yeah i'm i don't know what you, do you know much about his past relationships specifically like do you know if he had some bad breakups um no i don't really okay i mean isn't that the only thing she can really do here is put it on the line and be like listen i really enjoyed the time we spent getting to know each other i'm I'm into you romantically and I can't stress enough. I'm not a real witch, but I'm into some of this shit. And if that's super like a br deal breaker for you, I understand. But it, like, right. Like, yeah, isn't I hear that the I only mean, thing to do here? You don't, you went on a few dates with this guy, right? Like yes. friendly walks. Yeah. Well, so, we went on walks and then it got romantic. Have and you sexual. guys hooked up? Oh, oh. Okay, you hooked up. Yes. What? Okay. I mean, I feel like, I no, I'm no, I didn't know. I, 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 I didn't think that. Sorry. I thought they would just, kind of trying to she get out of the friend zone. turned romantic. Sorry. I mean, okay. yeah, I, well, so we did like the little hikes and then there was one night that um, we were going to exchange back rubs. So obviously I sucked his dick. And um, <laughs> you are awesome. Had, like, I love this girl. A few more. <laughs> I don't think he's on your level. Few, like, yeah, I don't think, I don't like know. That. I just, yeah. I feel like I fully agree with Ashley. You could put it on the line. I did this recently with somebody and I felt better for it, yes. no matter what the outcome is. And it kind of sounds like this guy doesn't really have a good sense of humor about it. Or maybe he's not going to believe you. But this feels like an uphill battle with this person, even if they decide like that you're worthy of dating and maybe you're not a witch. Like, 
<laughs> like, are you, is this like the one for you? Or yeah, are you like, like well, I'm in love with this guy? Man, I have been, I'm like so smitten ever since Aww. he came over for a back rub. Um, we <laughs> stayed up until like 4 a.m. talking Ugh. and I haven't like done that since I was in middle school. Yeah. And, like, and that was so like my first ever how, boyfriend. At what point did the back rub happen? <laughs> right before uh, the blowjob. It was, it was pretty, pretty right away. Really? Well, yeah. it, that's in, that is something. What do you mean? Well, Nick, well, what do you think? I, I don't know what to say well, here. I, I really want, if you're the guy. I'm just, just, just that on that data point alone, we've had callers even recently, uh, and I'm sure maybe you ladies can speak to this. I, I, men are fairly useless uh, post nut nut. Okay. Yeah. And and here is a here is a guy who who nutted who a delightful boat. He blow- actually didn't. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, which was unfortunate, and I tried. Did he? Did yeah, he, but that that that, that like, kind of takes away my. You know, can you not love him? Be like, if I was a witch, if don't I was a you witch, think I would have made came. you come? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I would have abracadabra your semen into my mouth. <laughs> I <laughs> might I have a... to use that. Um, yeah. I, he said he doesn't come from blowjobs usually. Okay. And it was like a fucking hour. So did he kind of pull back after the hookup? No, he was, we were like texting every day after the hookup but and then had another and then had finish. a third. But no hangouts. But I'm saying like, oh, that's true. I just, I didn't know if it was like, uh, he got what he wanted. I guess he actually didn't. I don't know. But he, no, no hangouts after that. Like after, after the, after it turned sexual, did you keep hanging out or was this purely text attention based? We, we hung out in person a few times after the first hookup. Okay. And did you hook up every time you saw each other post the first hookup? Yes. How did... I like I guess that I'm really curious like how did when he kind of like when he realized he was serious about his concerns about witchcraft not um, mm-hmm. like how did it make you feel like did you feel defensive more confused totally confused yeah I can't I like I couldn't wrap my brain around it and I was trying to think of anything I could compare it to and I couldn't yeah, I just don't, I don't understand it. But I'm also like, those are his experiences. They were traumatic. So I'm not going to like discount that in yeah. any way. I just want to understand it and I can't. And so well, I'm like I, frustrated about that. Yeah. I just really want some more information on, on those past experiences. Same. You know, I'm car- I do too. You know, because it's like, oh, someone said they were a witch and like weird things. Ha- well, what do you mean weird things happen? I agree with uh, um, Ashley and Raina in the sense that like, you don't know a ton about this guy. You've hung out with him. Yeah, you hooked up. But at the end of the day, he does. He, he comes across, at least to us, as fairly tightly wound. And you come across as more of a free spirit. And even when he asked you about it, you, you joked, right? You, you didn't get all like, oh, of course right. not. You didn't get like immediately defensive. You're like, of course I am. Mm-hmm. Like you, you were lighthearted about it. You, you describe yourself as, you know, gothic and, and things like that. You are into, you know, what more traditionalists might call unique things. And like, do you really... I feel like this guy might take away your shine, so to speak, you know, in terms of like, even if he, it's just such a weird thing for him to be so earnest about and so concerned that even if he were to be like, okay, I guess I'll, I'll see where it goes. Are you going to be like, how are you going to, you're, I feel like you're going to have to, you're going to be self-conscious about how you act around him Mm -hmm. is to not give him witch vibes, which is bizarre in itself. So that's kind of one of the reasons that I like him so much is because I have like pretty bad anxiety and it's really hard for me to be comfortable around people, sure. um, especially especially like a romantic kind of person. And so but I feel like I can totally be myself when I'm around him. And even still, I mean, I did I did also write him a letter that I sent him if he would like to hear it. It is a front and back, but I write kind of big. Do you want to give us a, the gist? Can you also give us the timeline? So you you were you got on a couple of dates. It turned sexual. You brought up the, yes. the witch thing, and then he said, "I'm out on this." And how long has it been? Um, gosh, I don't even know how long it's been since. I want to say it's been like two months since we started hanging out and like like doing the trails and stuff. Um, maybe even longer than that. And then this last part. Let's see. He told me we had the phone conversation, not this last Saturday, but the one before. And we had been hanging out for about two weeks prior to that. So it's fresh. You brought this up. You had the conversation. You haven't talked for a little while. And then you decided to send him this letter. Is that like where we're at? Um, Yeah. After the call. And he was like, you can reach out if you want to. And I was like, 
probably won't. Like, I feel weird about, you know, you like, he said he wanted to take space. He didn't say like, I don't want to hang out with you at all. He was like, I just need some time. Uh, Did you send this letter? I did. Okay. It does essentially say that I am not a witch and that I use, (laughs) uh, I guess I use spell jar as like a loose term because the spell jars that we made were like, it was like an arts and crafts thing that I did with my friends. I put that we didn't recite anything or do any type of ritual. So you're and earnestly trying to be like, listen, let me explain myself. Like this is like the court of law. Yeah. <laughs> like it's Yeah, I mean I, I hate that you have to do a, this. I know. I, I know. hate you have to walk this I know. all back. I just, I mean, to me, I'm like, it's too much. You, it, we're getting too much in the weeds of all the defending yourself. Like, yeah. I think yeah, you did nothing wrong. <laughs> I really also want to validate how you feel that you really like him and you don't feel comfortable around a lot of people. But just also knowing that there are other are people out there that will make you feel comfortable. Just like, let's just also know that this is not the only guy in the world that's going to quell your anxiety and have you feel a certain type of way and be receptive to you. You're awesome. And you're funny and cool and you sound really intelligent and like you know yourself really well so you will find someone that is providing what you feel like you're getting from this guy so that being said a person that you're going to be with for real should take your word for it you shouldn't have to defend and redline all the things that you've said to them up until this point you should be able to say i'm not a witch and they should believe you yeah Yeah, so that's simple and you sound really funny and cool about all this stuff. And I think if somebody, anybody's welcome to voice a concern with you, right? Like if somebody ever said to me, you, know, you and Ashley do the show about dating and sex, I'm concerned you're going to talk about me in this certain way. And I would have a very mm-hmm. calm, rational discussion about what I've done with my boyfriends in the past, how I've spoken about past relationships. I'd like them to take my word for it. They're welcome to listen to the show, but I'm not going to keep gratifying this. I'm not going to keep explaining myself, yeah, you know? Great. And I agree with Ashley, too. It's hard to find somebody you really care about. So I get wanting to explain yeah. yourself. It's really tough. But how many times am I going to have to do this? I just think all that's left to do is I like you and I'm not a witch. And, you know, like, yeah. Has he responded to the letter? He has. Um, a- another part of the letter is I did say I do have a crush on you, but it's like just crush. I'm not trying to, like, jump into a relationship with you or anything, because I also was worried that maybe he got, like, super freaked out by that and was like, oh, feelings too fast. You what know? was his response? To the letter? Yeah. Uh, He said, I super appreciate you sending that and for clarifying. I wasn't trying to, or I'm sorry if it came off as an accusation. And I I don't know. He just like thanked me for sending it um, and said that he really appreciated it. That was it though? There was no... Yeah. pretty. I mean, no next steps. And then I, I responded to that and I said, I don't know. I essentially just like told him that I want to respect his boundaries and that like he if he still needs space like that's totally fine and but that i'm i'm like around if he um wants to talk and he texted back the next day and said like i really appreciate you like allowing me to have time and space how long ago was this thursday he texted me yeah so about four or five days four days ago ish are you looking for uh partner like you're 29 right like you're what's what is your goal to find somebody and like be in a serious relationship like let's take him out of it but are you at a point in your yeah. li- are you at a point in your life where that's what you want uh yeah um i just uh have a bad picker and i like tend to i don't i don't want it to be like just anybody like i settle a lot mm-hmm. you know i hate that you blame yourself and you say I, I have a bad picker i mean it sounds like you found somebody that created joy in your life that you enjoyed that reduced your anxiety and all we can do is just like i feel like emotional talking about this all we can do is like lean into things that make us feel good and be cautiously optimistic and be honest and you're not some idiot who picks terrible people maybe you are i don't know if you pick terrible people but you don't seem like it we all pick terrible people. but if you're if you think so we've talked about this on our show if you think you have a bad picker that's why there's people here like us to be like it shouldn't feel like this for yeah. you you know like if you really want to find somebody and that's what you're looking for the right person just it won't make you feel like this like it will feel easy and you'll feel like someone thinks it's so dope that you do what you do. It won't be defending these things and having to have anxiety like it, it, this is causing you more anxiety now. You know what I mean? So like we're two months in that this person has kind of made you doubt yourself, have you defend your fucking spell jar and now giving you like anxiety <laughs> about it. So if it works out, I think if he comes back around and he's like, I've thought about this and I'm willing to kind of move forward i'd be okay with it i'm talking yeah. like you we, we know you're yeah, a friend but, but otherwise i just think that just know that this isn't really how it, it should feel and there are other people out there that won't make 
you feel like that. And if you think you have a bad picker, that's also fine. But that's why you, there's other people to kind of. Well, it's something to consider, too, if you think you have a bad picker. Just because you think he's better than the rest doesn't make him great. You know, he's just mm -hmm. better than yeah. some other shitty options. I kind of just go back to the original point uh, that Raina and Ashley said. It's just like, he just seems, he doesn't fully accept you for who you are. Mm -hmm. And he could be a great conversationalist and just like easy to talk to. But at the end of the day, he doesn't really accept who you want to be and who you are. Right. And, you know, he's like a decent guy to hang out with, but maybe he's just not your guy. That's I guess like part of it is like I have a hard time finding people that are like accepting of me um, in a romantic sense. I have like a lot of really wonderful friends, but this just like felt so different. Yeah, and that's totally. why I'm like holding on to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it also happened like, like when it got romantic, it also happened like right after I deleted my dating apps and I was mm -hmm. like, fuck this. I'm over this. I don't want to have to like meet somebody on Tinder. Or, like I would rather meet somebody in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, yeah and it happened like shortly after that and it was totally unexpected like mm -hmm. i did not i mm -hmm. mean i know like coming over for a back rub is probably going to lead to something but it but i wasn't expecting it yeah and it's flirty and it's exciting and you just reached the like fuck it stage of dating mm -hmm. so it must have felt so serendipitous and like yes this is how it's like the supposed to of like finally like i've been in the trenches dealing yeah. with all this mm -hmm. bullshit and now i get this and like i don't know it from the way you've kind of told the story, I, I maybe follow more on your approach than I think other people in the room, just in the sense of like, I feel like from what I'm getting from you, it seems like you're sorting this as like, this is his trauma. Like he has legitimate and it might be, you know, trauma and obviously trauma is a spectrum. Like there's a whole great range of seriousness, but like he has like real trauma around this. And so you're yeah. treating him with the same kind of like acceptance and patience that you would hope a partner would like approach you with. Does that feel accurate? Like yeah. it's part of it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And like, I think it's, it seems like maybe you're seeing yourself in him in ways where it's like, and it makes total sense, especially if you're feeling like accepted, like just like feeling like there's like that core level of alignment. And I think also, I don't know, I think in situations when I've done that in the past where I think I'm like, oh, I'm treating you like I wish someone would treat me. Sometimes it can just be really helpful to treat myself that way, which is maybe like cheesy and reductive and too simple to be helpful. But like, sometimes really like resurf like recentering that and like when I catch myself like kind of like pining or yearning or like m kind of making efforts to like reach out or to feel like connected or to like kind of like embrace this person even in like a small like metaphysical way like redirecting that right. back to myself can be really helpful even though again it's like easier said than done it's actually funny that you say that because like my next journal entry that I had was like, I can't wait to love myself the way that I love like my friends and my people. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been like working. I'm sorry. I'm crying. So much. don't it's you okay. dare apologize. I'm going to start crying with you. Second. <laughs> I want to validate that it is really hard to find totally. somebody that means so much to you. And, you know, we're all looking for somebody who like accepts our brand of anxiety or whatever it is that we're going through. And I understand not wanting to let it go, but you, you've done all the right things. You've yeah. explained it. And there is a certain level of compromise in your relationship and explaining yourself and saying, this is, this is where I come from. This is where my past has led me to, but there's not much else that you can do. You've done all the healthy, good things. Mm -hmm. You've explained yourself, but there's a point at which you go past over explaining yourself. And I, I like yeah, what you yeah. were saying, which is that like you have to look in the opposite. Like what I what I want this behavior and the in the reverse. Like if you were really uncomfortable with something he did, would you keep treating him like he has to keep explaining himself and keep apologizing? Like doesn't sound like it. Um, no, I I wouldn't. Um, but I'm also not like for me. Like if I need to take space, it's like a day or two. Um, but I also understand that some people need like longer to think and figure out like what they're trying to figure out i think i this, don't that's all you can do like if yeah. he, he'll he figure it out on his own if he wants to move forward i think and all you can do yeah. in the meantime is also just focus on loving yourself you're 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 so great like i just we are we all in this room the just room has fallen so in much love to, with i you. know we all are, like so in love with you and it sounds yeah. like you've great friends and <laughs> i mean i'm sure if you're a little more like <laughs> goth witchy texas is not the best 
best place where you feel like there's all your people well, there. Awesome. Oh, oh, you're awesome. awesome. Oh, never mind. You're great. Um, that's I love to hear that. So just yeah, I was like, do Texas. Th- mm-hmm. Just fo- focus on that. I don't know. You'd like if you feel like you still have a, a journey of self love, then there's you could focus on that and like di- redirect this attention and this time and energy that you're kind of placing on this guy to yourself. You're only looking for one. Mm-hmm. You know, the n- most amount of relationships that you're ever going to have that don't fail is one. That's it. Unless they die, you know, and then technically maybe it didn't fail. <laughs> but other than that, you're just going to have one. And you're, yeah. you're not that old. You're 29. You're young. You're super young. And you already mentioned just recently that you actually were kind of going through a like a moment of dating fatigue, as you described it. Like, you know, it's like, fuck this. And we get off the apps. want to have it more organically. And like this guy, yeah. and like it, what felt like almost good timing at first. In, in fact, the way I hear it, it almost sounds like bad timing because you met like a good enough guy to give you just yeah. a little enough, a, a, enough a hope to get you excited after like just coming out of a bit of a rut. Right. Yeah. But yeah. in reality, he's probably just another fucking guy. Maybe easy to talk to. You had one good night and I'm not saying he's, you know, maybe he ends up being your guy. I, I don't know. But most likely, like I said, he, he doesn't seem to really fully accept you for who you are. And maybe that's like hitting a little harder than it should right now because you, you are kind of going through this period right now. But I just think maybe it's just another signal to like really hone in on yourself again. Maybe, you know, it's, oh, when we're dating, it's like we get fatigued all the time. It's great to take breaks. Go back to the whole like working on yourself, focusing your friends, you know, go back to like, you know, maybe, you know, not putting yourself out there as much. And it, I think things will, will play out. But I think right now, maybe you met this guy at the wrong time because you were feeling a little vulnerable and it kind of masqueraded itself as something that was kind of organic or what you were looking for. And then he had a couple like, you know, early singles, you know, where he just kind of couple early hits mm-hmm. and and you're like, you got really excited and yeah. got some false hope. And now you kind of have these kind of false expectations for this guy. And to your point, like you, it's kind of like, I understand why you did it, but like you shouldn't have, you didn't need to, write a whole letter explaining why you're not a witch to this guy. Mm-hmm. Like that was overkill. I understand why you did. There's nothing wrong for doing it, but he didn't deserve that, uh, uh, that amount of energy from you. And I just think if you can just remember, you're only looking for one. I know like it gets super annoying and you, know, you, you, know, it's, you get impatient, but like the, the rest of your life is a super long time and you just have to find one. And when you're lucky enough to find the one, then it, it, the payoff is so great. So anytime you're like in a rut like this, just remember, like, it's just, you're just looking for one. And the life, sorry, no, no, life is super long, you know, life is short, but like life is long. And I'm a big fan of like, just cause something can't be right now doesn't mean it's never. And it sounds like on the positive side, this has set you on a path of some self-discovery and some growth and loving yourself. And maybe you lean into that and maybe he will come around someday. Maybe he'll change his mind, but you've done all the things. And it sounds like you're going to lean yeah. into loving yourself and done all the things you can do down the road you're going to be kind of annoyed that you wrote him that letter yeah you won't maybe. be able to answer that question quite yet but yeah report back yeah. five years from now <laughs> you didn't do anything I, I wrong also like a letter writer no that's so. okay but i just feel like you're gonna look if you go back and read the letter you're gonna be like why did i need to explain myself so much to this fucking guy like why right you know and i think right now you just can't see the forest through the trees so to speak Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I just think maybe just you know, take another time out, you know, from from dating a little bit. You know, I always say leave the doors and windows to the rooms that you hope to fill. But you like, you know, you never really but you don't have to, like, put yourself out there as much, you know, because it's vulnerable. Yeah. And you, you know, so just take a step back and just still be open. It's going to it's going to work out. Just remember, you're only looking for one. It's, gonna, it's definitely going to happen. You're only 29. Cosign. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. Maybe read Don't Text Your Ex Happy Birthday. If you haven't yet, I think I haven't yet. Okay. It might, I don't know. There might be some nuggets in there for you. For sure. Yeah. I just don't think he's, I don't think he's worth all this energy you're putting into him. You only do so much. You've done the things. And I think that it's really nice that you're on this path of self-love and you should do something today, this week to 
ratify how great you are. And we all think you're so funny. We're also smitten with you. Like <laughs> call all these friends that you have and like go do something and just remember like what a bad bitch you are. Mm -hmm. And also just <laughs> bad like, witch. Your feelings about <laughs> <laughs> your, your feelings about someone doesn't necessarily make them who they are. Mm -hmm. You know? So yeah. you're excited about yeah. them, you know? And like, that's how you feel, but like that doesn't necessarily say anything about who he is, how he is going to be as a partner. Totally. You know, and things like that. So yeah. Yeah, it's just something I to remind yourself that when you're like, eh, we all we've we've all been there, been there, paid yeah. for that. Yeah. All right. OK. All right. Well, keep us um, posted on on we'll all do. things, you know, witchcraft and boys and men <laughs> yeah. and just take care of yourself and check in with us. Good luck. We'll do. All Thank right. you so much. Thanks. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye. All right. Raina, Ashley, before we let you go. Uh, I want you to settle the debate we had. We talked about this on Better Date Than Never, uh, the am I an asshole roommate situation. In a roommate situation, depending on like, you know, how, how connected the walls are, is it reasonable expectation to ask your roommate not to have sex on a work night or a school night, so to speak, at oh. the risk that they could wake you up at, say, you know, one in the morning? This is just like such a lose lose like this is just like the plight of roommates right that's and what people I, my who, argument people was like hey sex. listen that's part of being a roommate it, it feels like a conversation between two girlfriends that you're like i want you to get laid uh, clearly you know i don't want to deprive you of orgasms but i'm hearing you which i don't know if you i don't know if that's embarrassing for you also you know but i'm hearing you and i'm like losing sleep can how can we troubleshoot this like <laughs> are we into shower sex is there a noise machine situation like it's there's not a solution. The solution is not stop having sex. And the solution is also not let me lose sleep because I'm here and you have sex. It's like it's got to be some sort of compromise. Is it pounding up against the wall that you sleep against? So for the spirit of debate, let's say like they've done everything they could do within reason to like eliminate noise. Then it's like you've got I mean, you don't you, I mean, run the lease out, I guess. I don't know how much longer is on it, but that's like you made a bad roommate decision. This has been a bad roommate setup. Like we've all kind of had that. Yeah, my and first, we like live and learn. Yeah. I, I mean, my first roommate in New York, we just had totally opposite schedules. She worked nine to five. I worked five to 2 a.m. I was a waitress. She had like a normal job and we were always having sex at different hours and it was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> in a New York City apartment. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. that was a real, the toilet was in her bedroom. It was a whole thing. Um, but oh, no. that just, we had to run out the lease and it just wasn't somebody that I could live with. We weren't compatible with each other. Sending the prayer hands. Like right, right in the middle of somebody's sex session, I'd be like, right, you're killing my vibe. You know, it feels a little instigative. But of course, you're welcome to say this is too loud. This is my home. I pay the rent. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going in there with the like air horn, like the app on my phone, like, burr, 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 burr. like I'm at the door. Like, I don't know. I feel like when I was younger, I was just such an asshole like that. I'm like, two can play this game. Like I used to have like banging with the guy that lived below me. Like he was a DJ and we would, I would just, I would grab a weight and bang on the floor and he would be playing his music loud. I was like, I'm ruining my own life. Like this. And then we finally hashed it out one day and we were super considerate from there on out. <laughs> but like we finally were mature adults about it because we ran into each other in the hallway. But I just, it's a shitty situation. Yeah. And I think there's a world in which if someone's dealing with this right now, like if it's your close friend that you want to continue living with and continue a friendship with, it's like actually just to sit down, have a mature adult conversation about like, I know I want you to have sex, but I also want to sleep. And how can we figure this out and compromise? Or if it's someone that's a random roommate that you just tell yourself, I'm going to run the lease out and then this will be over. And sometimes things feel better when you, there's an end in sight. Things can feel better when you know it's only a matter of time till it's like over for good, too. Or when you retaliate. So I think you should find somebody. Oh, and yeah. You can, you can also be as loud and be like, do you like this? Are you cool with this? Because I'm just going to keep doing this at 730 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Before my class. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm not a fan of retaliation. I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, moving is hard and this sucks. But like, it just probably isn't your roommate. Probably <laughs> isn't, your person, isn't your person to live with. <laughs> and if there can't be a solution, because like, I want my friends to get laid. I want them to like get theirs. But not at, I need eight hours. Bed noises wouldn't bother me. But if someone like. But like you're living with a person and it is the nature of a roommate situation. I don't to just, would be very loud. Maybe that's that's you. That's your problem. Like some like, like six inches. Actually, now I want to talk about that. Are what? you <laughs> next neck in the bedroom? <laughs> Do you talk at all? Sure. OK. Yeah. But they're like noises? You know, six inches. Do you alert in someone when you're coming? Not like <laughs> mime only rules. <laughs> I'm pretty loud. Someone. Do you. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, you know I just, when you say it like that i had a situation recently where i was like oh okay i didn't do, know do a lot of guys silent do silent comers most guys tell you they're coming right 
Yeah, it's my favorite thing. I want to talk all about it. A hundred percent. I'm having a conversation. <laughs> I want to know. Well, it's like, more of like a heads up. Where should I land? True. I just you know? I like the the term I'm gonna come. Like I 100%. will fantasize about that until the end of time. Silent comers are my I wanna nightmare. Hear, <laughs> I want to hear the word come at least five times yes. while we're having sex. If you I want you to tell me you want me to come. I want it to go back and forth. Like I a want a progress yes. report. Yeah. I want to know that we're I getting there. I want to know quantities <laughs> and where it's gonna land and like how much of it is gonna go inside of me. I'm uh, a big fan of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And then do you like the word come or do you like uh, uh, alternatives like, like load? Like my load. load. I'll do load. Does more. I like a, if somebody tells you they're going like to put a huge load in you. I'm very I don't into it. Load. I do. Very into we that. are an yeah. anti-load show, I would say. Or we've had a lot of anti-load You're not pro discourse. Load. Because well, we, we made some Derek very read a, uh, a, a text. A uh, sext exchange. A sext exchange about a guy talking about his load. And I just like come. Yeah. But Raina, so here's the thing with Raina. I'm very different. Raina was... <laughs> She like wants all the details of the com, like those the temperature, the quantities. Like she I don't wants, know how hot it's gonna she be. Wants, well, <laughs> but then when my it's, load's a little chilly today. <laughs> but then when it's on her, she hates it and has to get off her immediately. And I'm I'm more inclined to be like, it's you not bathe that big in it. I don't like bathe in it, but like it's just I'm not grossed out by it. As you're more like, I'll get it off immediately. Like I'll just, you know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not grossed out by cum. I'll just like come talk, but I, I don't want to see it afterwards. Right, you don't want to see it. I, I want to see. You it. like to get cummed on. I don't really like to get cummed on that much. Like you could do it, but I don't like it. I'll pretend I like it and I'll beg for it. But the second it happens, I need a towel immediately. I feel yeah. like most guys are like that too, though. They like the idea of it, and then it happens, and then they're like, "I'm so <laughs> sorry. Oh, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry." <laughs> But I'm like, never apologize for coming. <laughs> That's my memoir name. Ladies, oh, we could talk for hours. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. Uh, sadly, we have to let you go, All right. which is sad. Nick, will you come on our show? Yeah, yeah. please. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. I have to go out of the country for a few weeks. We heard. And then I'll be back. Okay, great. And we'll then can I come on? We would love that. Yes. Yeah. I'd love nothing more. Uh, please let my audience know where they can find you, where they can maybe see you on tour, maybe see a boob or two. Uh, you got some sex <laughs> toys out there. Now. I know. Um, that was a one time. Pitch away. Um, Girlsgottaeat.com and you can get tour tickets there. We start back up in the fall and we're going to be on the West Coast, New York, Toronto, London even. So get tickets London. to- London. Yeah, we're you starting very cool. the fall tour Thanks. in London. Yeah. So, and it's our snack city tour. That's what we call you can get tickets and um, everything really at girlsgotteat.com and follow Girls Got Eat podcast on Instagram and TikTok and then vibesonly.com is the sex toys and info on the app and everything. So really just girlsgotteat.com, vibesonly.com. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, check all their great stuff out. Uh, we'll be po- I'll be podcasting with them in a few weeks. Hopefully. Can't wait for that. Yeah. I said hopefully. Yeah, hopefully when you get back, you'll come over like, and do no, it. I'm like, no, it's just like no, no, it's my, my hope. Nick, we uh, want oh. you on the show. Oh, okay. right. I, I pitched this. Yeah. I was the one who emailed and asked about yeah. this. <laughs> That's how this all happened. Uh, we're here because we asked. Well, it was an immediate. It, it, it was an immediate yes. Okay. Yeah, it it, was. You, you guys did respond pretty quick. Yeah. This was wonderful. I'm uh, sorry. We don't give immediate. Sometimes we have, you know, when we get pitched, it's like, oh, you know, no, it was like yes. <laughs> no, uh, we were excited. In, in case you care. Uh, we do care. Anything else do we need? No. Yeah. Bye. 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 (laughs) Hey, guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.